Welcome to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Jenny Taft. This podcast is the full show from today's episode of Undisputed from start to finish. They've got a busy slate, so skip Shannon. Let's get to it. Good morning. Welcome to Undisputed. I'm Jenny Taft with Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp. I don't know about you guys. I had a great weekend watching sports again. How are we doing? Doing okay. Just doing okay? Yeah, well, <laughs> allow me to wish a happy birthday to one Tom Brady who turns 43 years young today. But that birthday pales in comparison to the birthday of August 3rd, the one everybody is talking about. Happy birthday, Ernestine. Yeah, happy birthday, Ernestine. Woo. I don't know about that other guy. Happy birthday, Ernestine. She's even younger than Tom Brady today. <laughs> happy birthday, Ernestine. Wait, you are you right good? about that. Yeah, I'm real good. Yeah, I bet you are yeah. real good. You're a little quiet, Shannon. I ain't got nothing to say. Huh. Uh, to say. Might uh, be a long show for you. Uh, we I do have to talk to about <laughs> what we saw over the weekend, a packed weekend of NBA. Let's talk about this one. While Kawhi and the Clippers dismantled the Pelicans on Saturday afternoon, LeBron and the Lakers fell to the Raptors later that night, 107-92. Kyle Lowry dropped 33 points in Toronto's bubble debut, while Los Angeles shot a season-low 35% from the field. LeBron scored 20 points, but Anthony Davis only had 14 after scoring 34 against the Clippers on Thursday. Shannon, how concerned are you about your Lakers? Skip, I'm really not concerned at all. Um, I, I think it's, look, they beat the, they beat the Clippers. Uh, and they shot the ball poorly against the Clippers, Skip. They was under 40%, and they still found a way to win that ball game. This was the lowest poor shooting ball game that they had all year. They were 35%. Skip, they're just not knocking down shots. Eventually, that's going to change. They shot, left, they're down uh, in the first two games. They're shooting 11% lower than what they shot during the regular season before the break happened, Skip. They're shooting 8% lower from the three-point line mm -hmm. after the break than what they did before the break. It's just a matter of them making shots. And it's going to come because you see everybody else starting to heat up from the three-point line. You see the Clippers <laughs> earlier, Skip, they seemed like they couldn't miss. They had 16 threes at the half. Ended up breaking a team record with 25. We see the Rockets. Now, we know the Rockets are going to get up a bunch of threes. <laughs> we see the Celtics got up a bunch of threes and made a bunch of threes. Portland, with that dynamic dual backcourt, they got they can make threes. <laughs> I just believe it's just a matter of time before the Lakers start to make these open shots, and then things will look a lot different. So, Skip, that's all it, com it comes down to this. Because if you look at LeBron's numbers as far as assists, Skip, yeah, they're down. But he's averaging more potential assists after the break than what he wore before the break. It's just a matter, as Doc Rivers once coined the phrase, it's a make or miss league. And when you're making shot, everything is, oh, man, look at them, they're looking well. And when you miss shot, things are not going so well. So I believe once they start to knock down a few of these shots, uh, unfortunately, the Jazz, you got to feel this brunt tonight. So uh, we couldn't do it to Clippers, even though we won that game. Toronto, Skip, the thing is what people don't realize about Toronto, they're more than Kawhi. Remember, Skip, they were 17-5 and five in which games Kawhi Leonard didn't play. Now, I'm not saying they were a better team, but it just goes to show you Nick Nurse can get these guys to play. They moved the ball. Kyle Lowry, Pia, uh, uh, Siakam, they were all-stars. OG is starting to come around. So they got a very good team. Van Fleet is better than people think, Skip. He can step down. He can knock down big shots. He was a four-year start, if I'm not mistaken, at, uh, a four-year uh, letterman at Wichita State. Mm -hmm. So we know what he represents. So this is a very good team. They're second in the East for a reason. I mean, think about the teams they're in front of. Miami Heat, they in front of them. Boston, they're in front of them. Philly, they're in front of them. They're right behind the Milwaukee Bucks. So this is a very good team. But what happened early on, they let Kyle Lowry get going. Skip, he had 33, but he had 14 rebounds. He's a tough, gritty little player mm -hmm. because, and he does, he's not flashy. So he's not going to get the praise and the adulation like a Steph or Dame Lillard, Hard, Russ, these other point guards. But he's solid. He's solid. Don't you worry your pretty little head. Don't you, you get all these little scenarios floating around in your head. Because mm. whatever you think is going to happen, I see you key, key, key it up under your breath. Mm -hmm. But we got something for you tonight. Mm. And you sound like the fifth horseman <laughs> in LeBron's <laughs> inner circle. It sounds like you just got counseled by Maverick Carter, Rich Paul. <laughs> Why don't you say this? Or you could say this. Or you could defend yourself with this. You watched the game. You saw what happened. I did. But I'm not sure anybody else did. And you apparently did not. You must have turned your TV <laughs> off early in the fourth quarter. Because no, LeBron James, once again, he owns the first two minutes of every fourth quarter. But 
But unfortunately, they, they play the rest of the game. You hit the threes. Yeah, he hit a couple of threes, <laughs> and I thought, well, here we go. Yep. First two threes of the game, I thought, well, and I expected him after three quarters to change his sneakers again the way he did against the Clippers. But he had those red things red, on, yeah, and yeah. they clash with purple and gold. It's not a good look for me. It just <laughs> jars me. And I thought, well, he'll change. Maybe he'll put some J's on. No. Maybe, maybe he'll catch no, fire. No, he'll do that. Maybe he'll go Jordan fourth quarter. But he didn't. Skip, we have our own cooking appliances. You don't use somebody else's cooking appliances okay. if you got your own. Here's my problem. I don't know why everybody continues to give these two great players a pass for what they do not do down the stretch of games. I am not going to let LeBron James and Anthony Davis off the hook yet again. You tell me he is still, LeBron, the best player on the planet. I saw what ESPN ranked the bubble players, and yeah. he was number one. Wasn't AD like three or four on yeah, the AD, list? Yeah, AD was, I think was top was five. Three. Yeah, okay, so you got two top fives, including the top one. And look what happened again down the stretch against a good team, but not a great team. And again, I, I get what you're saying. That team has grit and toughness and blah, blah, blah. But they, they don't have Kawhi Leonard anymore, so they're not quite as good as they were a year ago. So what happened? LeBron hit his second three in the fourth quarter, and all of a sudden, with 10-23 left in the game, still a lot of time, mm -hmm. the Lakers forge ahead 76-72. to 72. Okay, so you're up four in the bubble against Toronto. You're mm -hmm. better than Toronto. Shannon Sharp thinks you're better than Toronto. Shouldn't you close that deal? Shouldn't you apply the pressure to them as opposed to them just suffocating you? Isn't that, have, haven't we talked and talked about how much better on defense the Lakers are this year? Yeah. And I, in fact, I sent out a tweet the other day and I, I just said, LeBron is playing so hard on defense. He's giving so much effort as he did at the end of the Clippers game against Kawhi and then Paul George mm -hmm. guarded both of them on the last possession, mm -hmm. that it's inspiring his whole team to play much better team defense. Right. Okay, so can Toronto defend? Yes, they can defend. Yes, they can. Were you stuck down the stretch trying to play Kuzma, who I believe is your closer, but you have a defensive mismatch because he's 6'8", and he's trying to guard six foot one Kyle Lowry, and he's just having a hard time. Yeah, he can't stand so, in front of So he commits, the Lakers committed four fouls in the fourth, but I think he had three, mm -hmm. and he just can't, he can't deal with it. Mm -hmm. So Kyle Lowry makes some shots. He makes two big threes. Van Fleet makes a big three. And all of a sudden, guess what happens to the two top five players? They lose the rest of the game 35 to 16. Mm -hmm. I want you to let that sink in. Last 10, 23 of the game, they get outscored 35 to 16 by the Toronto Raptors. Mm -hmm. That's not good. That's a bad sign. That's something that should make Shannon Sharp say, yeah, I'm a little worried about it, but no, you got no worries. I don't. 35 to 16? That's that's a, a, a night, but you get outscored by 19 points over the last well, they were, 10 they, and a half minutes. Look, Skip, they were outstanding in the first half. They gave up 43 points in the first half, and I thought their defense in the first half was suffocating. But some for some reason in the second half, they had a letdown. And like you said, Kyle Lowry, I mean, Kyle Kuzma trying to stay in front of Kyle Lowry. And Skip, when you start committing fouls, you put the team on the free throw line, and they're a very good free throw shooting team. They and made I'm, seven of eight in the fourth quarter. Yeah, okay. you, you, why are you fouling them? And I get, I get your point about AD. The only thing I'll say about AD, he was making the right plays, but sometimes you got to be a little bit more aggressive. Skip, you can't. At that guy can't have just seven field goal attempts. That's not good enough. He's perfect from the free throw line. And what they were doing, they were coming to get the ball out of his hand. He's making the right plays. Skip, if they make those shots, it's like, man, AD is unbelievable at passing the ball tonight. But because they missed them, now you said AD needs to do go out of character yep. and just run people over. That's not his game. But I do believe he needs more than seven field goal attempts. So over the last 10, 23 of that game on Saturday evening, LeBron James took five shots and made one of them, 0 for 2 from 3. Mm -hmm. And AD managed to take one shot, and it was a three-point shot, and he made it. And that actually tied the game with 6.38 left, and they still lost the rest of the game by 15 points. Right. So my point is, Anthony Davis got to the free throw line zero times in the fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. This is a man who, in the bubble in the two restart games, has made 25 of 26 free throws. Mm -hmm. He is a free throw shooting machine <laughs> for three quarters. Yep. But after that, 
Again, is he unselfish to a fault? Because clearly Toronto's plan right out of the blocks the other day Get was hand. double it, double it, double it. Yep. Just make him give it up because he'll give it up fast. Right. Like Giannis last night will not give it up right. fast. He's going to run through you, around you, over you. Sometimes he's going to charge you. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he's just going to finger roll over two players and score the basket. And hey, we're going to talk about Giannis a little later. And sometimes that hurts his team. Okay. You, you can argue. But A.D., it, it it all falls on LeBron or on LeBron to try to figure out who's hot and where am I going to go right. with the basketball? Right. Who's going to make a shot besides right. me? Right. Because nobody else could. And then Alex Caruso, the Caruso that you rave about and, and Laker Nation rants and raves about, he commits three turnovers down the stretch, yeah. okay? That that won't work. Right. He, he had three fouls. It, it won't work. He He's not that good. Right. In those moments, he wasn't stellar. He, right. he didn't make all the little big plays mm -hmm. that turned the tide in this game. Because to me, to lose over the last 10, 10 23 by 19 points is a really bad sign, e even early in the restart. But Skip, you have to give them credit, though, but you have to be impressed with the way they're playing defense. Um, LeBron, well, I guess so until the fourth the, quarter. They had a low. But think about what the Clippers did the next, uh, uh, the, the second game, as opposed to how the Lakers made them look. Now, Paul George has been unbelievable. I mean, Paul George has been out of his mind shooting the three skip. I mean, and what we saw on, from him on Saturday was ridiculous. I mean, he's stepping back. He's coming down walk, uh, and pulling up from the, uh, the three-point line. I mean, he's just been unbelievable. Kawhi was great, but Paul George, what he did, it really got him going early. Patrick Beverly couldn't miss from the three-point line. And, Skip, sometimes when a team is shooting the three-point ball like that, Skip, you just say, okay, they got us. We, we get you. Hey, we on to the next one. They, a team makes 16 to 24 threes in the first first half. You're not winning that game, Skip. And, by the way, the Pelicans flat out quit. Yeah, yeah, they just yeah. said, we're done. Yeah, yeah. You can have it. We'll watch. We won't get back yeah, on was... defense. They trailed by 42 late in the third quarter. That was, and, by the way, did the Clippers have any hangover from barely losing to the Lakers? No. I told you, moral victory for the Clippers. And they used it as a springboard right into the next game. Still no Lou Will. What's your nickname for him? The lemon Pepper Lou. Lemon Pepper Lou. <laughs> there's still no Lemon Pepper, and there's still no Trez, right, as right. in Montrez Harrell. And yet, they went out against a Pelican team that I had high hopes for in the restart. And no. I and Adam Silver's probably having second thoughts. I should have left the Pelicans' butt home. Maybe. I should have just, just left them home. Because, Skip, this has been a nightmare for them. Well, I mean, they had an opportunity to win the game. And, and uh, who did they play? The, who did they play opening night? The they they should have won that game. That was the game they had in hand, Skip. They really should have won that game. Play Utah. What, Utah. 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 You're right, yeah. right, because it was up yeah. down the street. Skip, but when you look at, when you look at the, uh, the thing that you like about the Clippers, if the Clippers could get a team that they should beat, they don't fool around with them. They go ahead and put the hammer on them, and the next thing you know, the fourth quarter, Paul George, Kawhi, they're sitting down with the heels kicked up. Mm -hmm. The Lakers, they're going to have to find a way to, and stop dilly-dallying around with these teams. Now, I'm not saying they dilly-dallying around with uh, uh, Toronto, because Toronto, I, I believe, is a better team than people to give them credit for. They're in second seed in the East for a reason. But they'll start making these shots, and, and we'll see tonight if they can get a couple of threes to go early, LeBron might need to be a little more aggressive trying to get the ball to the basket uh, because he's early on, he's been hanging around the three-point line, playing out of the post. So once we get, get down on that block and, or we get driving the ball, we're going to see if things open up. But Danny Green, Skip, between Caldwell Pope, JaVale McGee, and Danny Green, they gave us eight points. Mm. You cannot have your bench give you 50 and then the starters give you what they gave you. That's unacceptable. Mm. In any situation, regardless of who you play, yes, Toronto is good, but Toronto's not that good that three starters give you eight points between the two, the three of them. Mm. Okay, I hear you on that. But I did not want to hear LeBron after the game laud the Raptors for their championship DNA. Yeah, they got it. Because that served two purposes for LeBron. That discredits Kawhi and his contribution he last said year. It, he said not to take anything from Kawhi, mm. but they won, there were 17 but and 5. Let me, let me take something away from Kawhi. That's Skip, what he was saying. Let me ask you a question. Normally, when a superstar player leaves a team, what happens? When LeBron left the Cavaliers, what happened? When LeBron left the Miami Heat, even with D-Wade and Bosh there for a little while, what happened? Mm. Kawhi Leonard leaves them, and they're still the number two seed in the East. 
If I'm not mistaken, they were the number two seed last year in the East. Mm. So you can understand what LeBron is saying. Let's not minimize who they are and what they represent. Do you like their chances to win it all? No, 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 no. no nobody no. does. So the point is, all of a sudden, LeBron is lauding them to carefully change the narrative to don't think about what I didn't do because that's unacceptable for LeBron James to go one for five down the stretch of that game and lose it by 15 points. That I bet, I Skip, I thought he should have been a little bit more aggressive. Um, free throws, he's 4-7. They, they were 24-33. That... <laughs> That, Skip, that gets you beat. Those are, I mean, you can't be, you can't be 24 or 33. You can't miss nine free. That, that's nine free points that you just gave up. Okay. So what, do, what have I always said about Anthony Davis? I don't trust his big picture intangibles. I don't know if he's that guy to change your life, to take over games, because he never did. Remember, he had a, a way sub 500 in New Orleans, mm -hmm. so he couldn't carry them into right. prominence by himself. Right. So especially in fourth quarters, AD, to me, stands for all done. Because he's all done by the fourth quarter. He's, well, let me finish. L look at the four fourth quarters against the Clippers so far this year. Just nothing. Look, look what he's done. He's, he shot a grand total in four fourth quarters of two free throws. He made them both because he's, right. he, he's automatic. Right. Okay, but two free throws in, in four fourth quarters is completely unacceptable no. for that guy. He scored a grand total of 10 fourth quarter points against the Clippers. 10. We'll do the math. It's like 2.5 points per that's game. Correct. It's that's not, not good right. Not good it, there's something wrong with this equation. Yeah, I think Frank Vogel, see, what's happened, what, I mean, from what I can deduce, I'm watching AD skip, and he's basically going the entire third quarter. So that's 12 minutes. And then he's sitting on the bench for the first five to six of the fourth quarter. Well, maybe you might have to give AD a break in the third quarter. Maybe. And then you but bring him is, back at the start of the he fourth. He has been Mr. Third Quarter. Yes. So are you riding him in the third quarter because you don't trust him in the fourth? Well, because Skip, he kept us in the ball game. Without AD being as spectacular as he was open at night, mm -hmm. we're not beating the Clippers because the Clippers had started to slip away from us. They was up by double digits. And AD goes bang, bang, bang. And, he, and, and I think, if I'm not mistaken, we're down one at the start of the fourth quarter. Maybe we're tied. So we need it. And, and, and Frank Vogel said... The reason why we kept him in the entire game, he had the hot hand. Mm -hmm. He kept us in the ball game. But if you notice, Skip, LeBron, they're trying to get LeBron somewhere between 16 to 18 minutes in the first mm -hmm. half. 16 to 18 minutes. So they're trying to keep his minutes around 35 or below. That, that seems to me where they're heading at. And they're trying to get AD. If AD, they can keep AD under 37 minutes, they're, they're good with that. But AD is having to play because LeBron comes out with about, mm, plays like the first five minutes of the third quarter. And then he comes out, and then he'll come back in with mm -hmm. about two to three minutes left. Okay. Uh, with that being said, Skip, you might have to switch it up. You might have to take AD and say, AD, I know I've been riding you for 12 minutes in the third. I might have to give you eight, nine minutes and then bring you back Maybe. the start of the fourth and then take you out with about five but minutes. But it's about his mindset. It's mm -hmm. about his mentality. If I throw in the Toronto game in which he shot zero free throws in the fourth quarter, right. if I go four Clipper fourth quarters plus the Toronto fourth quarter, he still only shot two free throws in all the, in five fourth quarters of big games. Right. That's just wrong. What? Th this is a man, again, who at the bubble so far in two restart games is 25 of 26 from the free throw yeah. line. You, you got to force the action. You, you got to post people up and wheel and deal on them and yeah. just make them foul you. In three quarters, he... he Everybody fouls him because they can't deal with him. Right. You tell me he, he is unstoppable. Yeah, he, he is the advantage. He is the matchup advantage against everybody that plays because all the true fives are too slow to guard him on the perimeter. And all the all the the, uh, the smaller guys, Kawhi's and Paul George and all the other guys, they're too small to guard him on the block. So he is the one advantage okay, that he's so going to have. So Siakam was guarding him. Then Ibaka was guarding him. Okay, well, well they're bothering him. Right. Or... When, when the guard came to double, right, he's he just like, up. okay, I give it up. But see, Skip, that's a blessing and a curse because a lot of times we see guys. Now, when Russ gives the ball up and guys are making shots, they say, see how unselfish Russ is? But there are a lot of times that Russ wouldn't give it up. He's like, I'm going to the basket, hell of hot water. And they say, see, that's why Kevin Durant left. So you can't have it both ways. You're going to have to trust the guy. and says, I believe he will make the right play more times than not. And then you have to be willing to live with the results. Mm -hmm. See, sometimes we, we're so, well, he didn't make it, so that was the wrong play. No, no, no. Mm. 
Make the right play, live with the results. That's what you got to do. Mm. I believe in his heart of heart, Shannon Sharp lost a little trust in his Lakers on Saturday. That's what I believe. All I know is that we're going to win this game right here. And guess what, Skip? What? We're the Western Conference number one seed. Run tail that. Mm. Then what are you going to do? I don't know what the spread is on the game tonight because I did not look. It doesn't I did matter. not care, but I'll take it for a case. Don't even matter what I'll the take spread is. No, 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 no. Okay. I think it's a Utah. Utah no. at home. Guts. You are Utah at home. Utah at home. Utah at home. <laughs> Nobody's yeah, at home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They are, yeah they we are. can see their virtual fans. <laughs> they play your crowd. They play yeah. your crowd noise and everything. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> no mercy. The Rockets upset the Bucks 120-116 last night despite a monster 36-point game from Giannis Antetokounmpo. Russell Westbrook led the way for Houston with 31 points, and the Rockets delivered some timely defense down the stretch, ending the game on a 16-4 run to seal the deal. So, Shannon, on a scale of 1-10, to 10, how big of a threat are the Rockets? Skip, I'm going to give them a 7 for the simple fact Skip, when you look at the Rockets and they play small ball, they look like a, a college team. Because the tallest guy is probably going to be about 6'8". And P.J. Tucker is your five man at about 6'5 and a half, maybe 6'6". Six, six. I'll, I'll be kind. I'll say he's 6'6". Six, six, and he's your five. Mm -hmm. But, Skip, what they do, they put so much pressure on you with shooting threes. Skip, they don't shoot a high percentage. They shot 34%. But when you get up 60-plus, that means you making 20-plus. Mm -hmm. Skip, how many people are going to be able to keep pace with that? And then you get you get uh, uh, Giannis, and, and they turn the ball over. You can't against this team. The one advantage that the Bucks have, Skip, they're long, mm -hmm. they're tall. Yep. Chris Middleton, six eight and a half. Giannis is seven foot. Brooke Lopez, seven foot. Robin Lopez, seven foot. Skip, they have a long team. So the advantage you have is that you got to pound them on the inside. And Brooke Lopez was doing a great job of that against PJ Tucker. He's like, man, I ain't shooting no threes. I'm gonna get my butt down here on the block, and I'm gonna make you guys foul me. But they started turning the ball over. And just when you thought, because the, the, uh, the Rockets were doing a great job of, of controlling the clock, I mean, of controlling the take, mm -hmm. pace of the game, and then all of a sudden the, the, the Bucks like, well, let, let's try, let me try to shoot threes too. Skip, but the biggest difference in the ball game last night and what I've seen over the second half is Russell Westbrook. Skip, a lot of guys have tried to come in when they go join the Rockets. Man, they're going to shoot 53s a game. Woo, that's me. That's my game. No, it's not. Mm -hmm. Russ attempted three threes last night. He did. He made one. Mm -hmm. Russ says, you know what? My game is the mid-range. My game is attacking the basket. Mm -hmm. Let me do that. And they've embraced that. They haven't forced him into being something that he's not. Skip, he's not a three-point shooter. He's a guy that is a mid-range shooter. He's a guy that can get to the basket. I believe had Carmelo Anthony, they allowed Carmelo, and maybe Carmelo didn't do a good enough job of himself. Mm -hmm. Carmelo's not a three-point shooter. Yep. He's a mid-range, back to the basket, and they didn't play like that with him. Mm -hmm. But Russ says, I'm going to play my game. Y'all not going to love me and have people talking bad about me crazy. Yep. And you look at what he's done the second half, Skip, he's been as impressive as anybody down the stretch. And what gives them an opportunity, Skip, is that three ball. Skip, I've never seen anything like this. Maybe because I don't get an opportunity to watch the games, but now maybe because the games are spaced out, I can watch. I'm watching Boston. Boston's up 24 points, Skip. And in five minutes, they're down five yep. because of the three-point ball. Mm -hmm. It seems like C.J. And, 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 yep. and Gary Trent Jr., mm -hmm. he couldn't miss. Nope. And now with that, with that three-point ball, and because, Skip, they got up 61 three-point attempts in regulation. I mean, 21. Skip, you make, and that's going to be, that's their, four, that's their blueprint, Skip. They need to make somewhere between 15 and 20, 22, 23 threes. And they'll be in every game because they're so small. They're going to lose the rebounding because you look at Giannis had 18. Chris Middleton had 12 rebounds. Lopez had, Skip, they had 65 rebounds. They had 60. They are rebounding. They are rebounding. <laughs> they are rebounding them by 29. Mm -hmm. And lost the game by four. Yep. You turn the ball over against mm -hmm. this team. Yep. You shoot, Skip, how you lose, how do you lose? You almost shoot 50% from the floor. Mm -hmm. And you get your two best, you get to your two best players go for what, 60? Yep. Oh, no, my bad, 63. Yep. And then you get uh, uh, Lopez go for 23. And you lose, mm -hmm. or turn it over 22 times, yep. and let a team hit 22, 21 threes against you. Mm -hmm. And you'll lose every time. And that's the Rockets' blueprint. They're going to jack up somewhere between 45 and 60 threes. Mm -hmm. And if they say, we can shoot 34%, that's going to give us somewhere between 18 and 24. Y'all mm. ain't beating us. Mm. 
So, I want to make a statement. I have been covering and watching the National <laughs> Basketball Association for a long, long, long time. I have never, ever seen anything like have these you? Houston Rockets. Nope. I have never, ever seen a game won the way that game was won <laughs> last night. And back to Jenny's question, I was bullish on the Rockets back in December and yeah. January and February, back in the good old days pre-pandemic. And now I think I've gone a little higher. We used to do this question back in the good old days, and I think I would give them a six right. as a threat. Right. I'm up to an eight today. You're okay, you eight. You're a little better than I am. Because of their defensive grit and mental toughness. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about defensive because they mess you up. They steal your basketball. Mm -hmm. They deflect your passes. They get in your way. Mm -hmm. They are thorns in your side. They are the lice in your hair. Mm -hmm. You just can't seem to get a clean possession against these guys because James and Russ will get their hands on your yeah. basketball. Mm -hmm. James Harden, the stat of the night, the unsung, uh, uh, sort of underreported stat of the night, he had six steals last night. That's what turned the tide mm -hmm. in this game. So back to your point. This team got out-rebounded by 29. <laughs> this team missed 40 three-point shots, and about 35 of them were what I call wide-open threes. PJ like just, what, just corner threes where you're just – and it's the simplest three-point shot. The it's short the corner, too. It's the short corner three-point, and P.J., according to ESPN, came out at halftime and just kept shooting it and shooting it until he finally got frustrated with himself at halftime yeah. and sat down and said, I'm, I just keep, I'm short, short, short from right. the short corner. And yet he came right out of halftime and made his first two. And then later in the game, he made another crucial yep. one. So, again, he did not shoot it very well. James Harden didn't shoot it well. No. So you, James kind of got in foul trouble, which kind of threw him off. He had those four, four quick ones. Yeah, but... You know, look what Giannis did to James in their head-to-head -head matchup. Giannis goes 36 and 18. James had 24 points, but he did it most most of his damage from the free, free throw, throw line. Yes. Okay. So if I give you those numbers, if I had called you after the game and for whatever reason you had not watched the game, I said, "Hey Shay, guess what happened? <laughs> they got out rebounded by 29 and they missed 43." What Giannis do? Yeah. And 30. he had 36 and 18. What 40, would you say? Oh, they blew him out. It's a blowout. Yeah. And, and the first five minutes of this game felt like a blowout mm. to me. And I thought, ah, this is going to get ugly. Right. Nope. They kept scratching and they kept clawing and they battled back into the game. And then they just kept turning up the heat on the Bucks. The Bucks would go down there and just bully them. Uh, of all people, Brooke Lopez, who's the nicest guy in the league, he just bullying them he in the like fourth Shaq. quarter. He was looking like Shaq. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> hey, just give me the ball. I'll just wheel and deal. And yep. it's, it's not like he's going to tear the rim down. He's, he's making little little hook shots, mm -hmm. little two-foot hook shots. Yep. And you know what I'm yelling at Dan Tony? Because he's got Tyson Chandler on his bench. And I love Tyson Chandler. I know he's 37 years of age in his 19th season. Right. But Tyson Chandler is seven feet, one inches tall. Right. And I thought... Maybe give him three or four minutes mm -mm. just to disrupt the Bucks a little nope. bit, just to make Brooke Lopez say, uh-oh, I guess I got to kick it back out. Skip, the way I look at it, looking at Dan Tony, he thinks anybody that comes in there that can't shoot three disrupts their offense. That's why he stayed with it, because I'm saying the exact same thing. I'm like, Skip, they got killed on the offensive glass 17 to 6. What? I mean, it's like Giannis was playing volleyball. He tipped it to Lopez. Lopez tipped it to Giannis. Giannis tipped it to Middleton. Middleton tipped it. I'm like, dude, I mean, Y'all got to do something. You got to do something. And all they did was they kept stealing the <laughs> ball. When have you ever heard of a Mike D'Antoni team that focused on the defensive end? Mm -hmm. I don't know why. I don't know who's driving this train. I don't know if it's James in the locker room. I don't know if it's Russ. But they are both committed on the defensive end. L listen. James made a couple plays on, on sort of semi-breaks mm -hmm. on Giannis yeah. where, where he got in his way. Right. He, he bodied him up and, right. and beat him to a spot and made him switch hands, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden the basketball is loose and it's up yeah. in the air. So look what happened down the stretch. Do you realize they fell behind by eight points with three minutes left? Yep. Eight points with three minutes left. I thought left. it was over. And so did I. And, and guess what? Here, here are the Bucks' possessions after that. They go uh, Middleton turnover. Then they go George Hill turnover. Then they go Giannis turnover. Then Milton misses a three. Then they miss another three. 
then all of a sudden, Brooke Lopez gets a little lay-in, mm -hmm. and then Giannis gets a little finger roll lay-in. But then here we go again with Giannis turnover, and then at the end, Chris Middleton missed two threes. And the Rockets screwed up the one possession because they, they had a foul to give, and they should have just fouled him, and right. they, they let him just, just walk right into a wide-open three, yeah. but he missed it. Right. Which, by the way, quick comment on the other team, the beast of the East, I, I keep telling you, am I sold on the... No, I'm not right. sold on their overall team mentality. I know they're missing little Bledsoe and Connaughton for what it's worth. But still, am I trusting this? Because, listen, th there's a really good shooter on the other team. You know who he is. Yeah. And and he ain't there either. Bo Gordon. Yeah. yeah, with the, yeah. But Eric still, Gordon. I mean, I mean, the Bucks, not, they shot 35 threes in May 9th. Mm-hmm. Skip that. So, so, but look what they got outscored because mm -hmm. the, still the the visiting team, or I guess, no, that were they home team. I don't know what they were. But the but Rockets the, were home, what? Yeah, they? maybe they were. But the Rockets made 21. Yeah. So they outscored them by 12. They, they made 12, 12 more threes yeah, just because they took points. so many. And remember, that was the most threes attempted, in a, tied for the most, right. in a regular season game that didn't go overtime right. in history. Right. Okay. And I saw another stat, by the way, where in the history of the NBA, a team that got out-rebounded by that many and shot under 40% has never won a game. It's, let, been, it's been done 177 times, and all 177 lost the game. Let that sink Plus, in. Yeah. Well, think about it. The, this is impossible how they did this. You get out-rebounded by 29. You shoot less than 40% from the floor. You shoot less than 35% yeah. from the three. Yeah. And you still win the game in which you give up a 36 and 18 a 27 and 12, and a 23 and 12 from Ooh. their three best players. That's what you gave up, and you still won the game. Hmm, interesting. So, guess what happened on Friday night? It was Houston versus Dallas. Great matchup, big confrontation between two in state rivals. And Dallas went up seven points with, what, 40 seconds left, 43 seconds left? And here came the Rockets again. They would not. They refused to lose. So it came down to James Harden having to miss a last-second free throw to even give them a chance to force overtime. Mm -hmm. I have never seen this before. He obviously has such pinpoint accuracy from the free throw line, if we could see this. He aimed to, sh to shoot it softly off the left side of the rim, which I've never seen because usually you try to bang it off right, the front or, right. or bang it off the backboard. And I think the thing is, Skip, everybody was expecting him to do what you just that, thought, that bang it correct. off the backboard. And all of a sudden, Covington snakes back door and goes all the way around and has a pretty wide open, easy little tip in yep. to force right, overtime. Right. And then James scored seven in overtime, and here they went, right. and here they here well, they are. James got it started, Skip, because when they went down, I mean, uh, someone hit a three. I think it might have been uh, Donchich hit a three. Mm -hmm. It might have been Donchich or it might have been uh, Hardaway Jr. But the, no, Kleber. Kleber hit a corner he, three. He did. And Donchich is not making threes. Go ahead. James Harden walks up and hit a timeline. Skip, he got two bomb. guys in his brain. He was a bomb. I'm like, James, what are you doing? You don't need. Oh, that's a good shot, James. Mm -hmm. And that's, Skip, that's what they can do. Mm -hmm. The three ball, they put so much pressure on you. They yep. keep so much pressure on you because Russ is going to force you to retreat, and he's either going to go by you or he's going to pull up with a mid-range. Well, James either going to euro step you, lay it up, you foul him, or he's going to walk into a three. Mm -hmm. So you're so afraid of him. Russ constantly attacks, and he's getting into the lane. He's kicking it to uh, um, P.J., or mm -hmm. he's kicking it. House has been unbelievable, too, Skip. Daniel How, House. He, he, he can't miss. Uncle Jeff Green, he's been playing with really well. Okay, so they have the old Dan Tony, Steve Nash offense yes. going, except they're, they're they two, got two sons. That, well, they got two Steve Nash. Yeah. Because it's Russ or James. Right. One's left-handed, one's right-handed. Right. Russ is kind of, he'll go both ways, right. left or right. right. But, but James usually likes to drive to the left. Right. Okay, so they attack, and, and yet they're highly willing to kick to open shooters, and they're going to be open shooters on every possession. What makes them so much more dangerous than Steve Nash? They could also score the ball better than he could. Steve Nash couldn't score Not the ball. at the rim. Yeah, at the, James Harden is... Woo. Skip, James Harden is averaging 35. Steve Nash best year was what twenty? Yeah, Russ is, he, is. He's not going to be marching to the free throw no, line. No. James and Russ are going to march to the free throw the, line. The two of them together shot more free throws than the entire Bucks team. Mm -hmm. So that lets you know that you say, well, all they do is shoot threes. Not when you shoot as many. They shot thirty-one three uh, free throws. Yeah. So clearly they're just not shooting threes. Mm -hmm. 
Those two guys are attacking also. Now, if you build a wall, they're going to kick to the open guy. Mm -hmm. But they're slithery. James mm -hmm. Harden is going to be... I, Skip, I, I've, I've never, I don't care what anybody says. I've never seen anybody draw fouls like James Harden. Never? Never. No. I mean, he has revolutionized the way offense is played. Nobody... I mean, he's going to lead the league in free throw attempts. Free throw makes for the, like, the fifth or sixth year in a row. Nobody's ever done that. Yep. And the way Russ plays with that sort of rage about him, it's rubbing off on yes. James. And now they're both playing that way on the other end, on the defensive end. What? When you thought and no one really wanted to play with Russ or no one could play with James and no one could wanted to play with James or no one could play with Russ, these two see, have, seem to have found a way to play with each other in perfect harmony. They, Skip, I, 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 yeah. I, was, I, was, I was skeptical. I was one you of the ones that was skeptical. Because I'm like, well, both of the guys need the ball. But it worked. And it's worked really well. I don't know who's going to draw them in the first round, but I wouldn't be I one being <laughs> that who. Nope. Yeah. No. Different. No. It's working right no. now. I like the word slithery. That's a good way to describe <laughs> it. Uh, we'll have to see how it continues. I want to uh, hit pause on the NBA right now and talk a little bit about the Cowboys because they topped Forbes magazine's list of most valuable sports teams in the world with a value of $5.5 billion. Not bad when you consider Jerry Jones bought the team for $150 million in 1989. Not only did the Cowboys top the list for the fifth consecutive year, but they were also the only NFL team to make the top five. So, Shannon, with all this money floating around, is this a good or bad thing for Dak Prescott? It's not anything. It's frustrating to Dak, Skip, because he sees uh, a franchise worth $5.5 billion. He sees Jerry Jones' net worth is about $8 billion, which is a bill $3 billion has happened in the last decade. So Dak is like, Skip, this is how it goes. And I was ex explaining this to uh, Steve and I were talking to my, my crack research. We're the mm -hmm. best team. We're the best duo. Steve they, Owens, who won a high school. They, they, they keep yeah. on talking about Shaq, yeah. Kobe, and Kareem Magic. Mm -hmm. I think that Steve Owens and Shannon Sharp might be right there with them. Really? Yeah, best duo right there, right oh, there with them. I know every word that comes out of your <laughs> mouth sounds like Steve told you to say that. So, right? Skip, I, I'm looking at it like this. So let's just say for the sake of argument, Dak, Dak Prescott is one of Jerry's sons. And he watched his other sons, Amari Cooper, uh, Zeke Elliott, Demarcus Lawrence, Jalen Smith. He saw all these other guys get elaborate birthday parties. Mm -hmm. Jerry Jones spared no expense. And, they, and he said, Dak, when your birthday come, I'm going to take care of you too. And then they like, oh, it's my birthday. Finally, after four years. Like, Dak's like, I must have been born on leap year because I see everybody else signing every year. But anyway, he says, it's my birthday. And instead of saying, Dak, we're going to give you this big, elaborate birthday party, mm -hmm. they say, Dak, we're going to have to cut back on your birthday party. Yep. Is that okay with you? Dak said, well, wait a minute. You told me if I waited my turn, I was going to get what was rightfully mine. And so Dak is looking at it like, Skip, you gave Amari top dollar. You gave Demarcus Lawrence top dollar. You gave Zeke Elliott top dollar. And not one time did you ask them guys to give you a hometown discount. Before we even start negotiating, you says, uh, I'm going to need you to give me a haircut. Mm. And Dak says, no. See, that's what's frustrating, Skip. It's like I, I tell you, tell my kids, Skip, the kid used to ask me, well, Daddy, can I, buy, can I get this? I'm like, Daddy ain't got no money. They look at me like, Daddy, stop playing. Jared, Dak is looking at Jared. Skip, Skip you, you know Dak read the paper. Mm. He's like, hold on. Jared, you worth how much? Eight billion? The Cowboys worth $5.5 billion more than any other sports franchise in all the world? And you haggling me after you've given everybody else what they've asked for and more. Amari Cooper got 20 minutes. Skip, you know good and well. Amari Cooper is not a top five receiver. He might be barely in the top ten, but he's paid. He's compensated. D-Law is compensated like he's, like he's Aaron Donald. And Dak is like, wait a minute. Skip, you got the budget. It seems like Jerry budgeted for everybody else except Dak Prescott. And Skip, the salary cap is not tied to the value of the franchise. It's not like, uh, 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 I guess, in soccer, how much revenue you generate, that's how much money you can spend. It's not like that in football. Everybody's under the same cap, $198.2 million, million this year. Mm -hmm. So Dak, I, and I understand you looking at it like, man, he got all this money. He got a quarter of a billion dollar yacht. He got this, he got that. But it's not tied to the salary cap. It's just frustrating that Dak says, everybody else I've watched patiently, sat back, bided, bided my time, and now here comes my time to get paid, mm. and it's a no-go. I got to do the franchise tag. Mm. So it's frustrating.
So now it's my turn to wipe all the cowboy hate off my face. I just got—I got, I need windshield wipers over here to, to, to rid myself of the cowboy hate spewed across the table. I like that. You know I like that. That's my guy. You hate my team, and you want my team salary cap wrecked by Dak Prescott. So back to the question. Good thing, bad thing for Dak that this team is ranked number one by Forbes in the world, the most valuable team for five straight years. Five. No team in the United States had ever been ranked number one until Dallas broke through, the Dallas Cowboys, five years ago, and then they held the ranking five straight years. They go compete on it. They're worth $5.5 billion. And to me, this should have been, could still be, a great thing for Dak Prescott. How? This team isn't just America's team. It is the world's team. Yeah. And Dak Prescott isn't just this quarterback or that quarterback. He's the quarterback. Mm -hmm. He's playing the glamour position for the glamour team. Correct. This is the Hollywood Cowboys. Hollywood as in Central Hollywood in Dallas, Texas. Mm -hmm. I've never seen anything like it. We could talk the rest of this day and into tomorrow about why it happened and why it continues to feed off itself, right. but it does. Mm -hmm. And what it means is that you, you can cash in as the Cowboy quarterback on all the off the field endorsements and appearances. You, you're up there in the Brady range. You're in the Mahomes range. In fact, you might even be above them in the ability to endorse and, and to appear. You know how appearance fees work. Yeah. Dak Prescott can just name his price mm -hmm. right now. Last year, Dak Prescott, would we say he's the most charismatic quarterback in the league? No, he's not. No. D does he have the, the most dynamic personality of any quarterback in football? No, he does not. He's a really good guy, and yet he's a quiet guy. He's, he's a very um, sort of careful spoken guy, but he's not dynamic in interviews. Mm -mm. Yet he had 12 national TV commercials just last year. For all I know, he'll have 16 by the time this year starts. Everybody wants a little piece of this action because this is the biggest action in all of sports. Not, not just in the NFL. It's bigger than NBA power, it's bigger than baseball power. It's cowboy power. And Dak Prescott has the fame, at least by association, of being the quarterback for this team. But unfortunately, his union gave up the right to a salary cap and a franchise tax. Yeah. That's the deal. And again, you could fight it, you could hold out against it. You could do a lot of things, right. but they didn't. They caved right in. Remember, it was a very quiet story. When was it? During the pandemic. Right. It just kind of came and it went. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's the deal. Right. You got to live with it. So Jerry Jones can only pay X dollars to his players. Correct. I agree with you. He has somewhat overpaid some of his other lesser stars. Mm -hmm. But even Shannon Sharp agreed with me that Jerry did make a fair not, yeah. not an insulting offer, no, a fair very, offer. Yeah, very respectful. It was $36 million with 80 guaranteed at signing. That's pretty great. And that would be far, far more. Remember, if, if, if the biggest salary on the team is a little over 20 with DeMarcus but, or Amari. Yeah. Okay, so, so that would have been far more. But, but even the tag at 31.4, which he is now strapped with, mm -hmm. Well, it's still more than $10 million more than any other player on the team. So it's still pretty great. Skip, when I look at it, <clears throat> okay, I can assure you right now, um, the Ravens are budgeting for Lamar Jackson. It seems to me the Cowboys, they budget for everything. Jerry Jones says, you know what I want to do? I'm going to go this is my thing alone. I'm going to forgo, I'm gonna forgo all the licensing, licensing mm -hmm. the, the, the revenue sharing we do with that. I'm going to do my own thing. Because I believe I can do it better. I think I can work harder. I think I can hustle harder than what you guys hustle. So I'm going to do my own thing. You know, Jerry was the first one, Skip, when they had to deal with Reebok, when they had to deal, Jerry did his own thing with Nike. He did. The NFL got so upset is that they said, you know what, we're going to, because we, we had a deal with Nike, a couple of other teams. They said, we're going to give Reebok the 10-year deal. Jerry says, oh, do what y'all want to do. I don't care. So Jerry struck a deal with Pe Goga struck a deal with Pepsi. Mm -hmm. Everybody else have this uh, uh, the ticket. Jerry says I'm gonna do my own ticket deal. Mm -hmm. So Skip Jerry has always thought outside of the box. Says I can do more alone than I can with the team, with the exception of the TV money. So Dak Prescott has said, Well, hold on, Jerry, you over there printing money. 
Because not only do you own the Cowboys, you own Cowboy Stadium also. And you know, Skip, they have, like, Final Four games there. They have national title games there. They have concerts there. They have roadies. Yeah! Mm -hmm. So, Jerry, you just not making money off football, and guess what? It's not state owned. So, Jerry ain't got to split nothing. All the concession goes to Jerry. Mm -hmm. All the parking, Skip, goes to Jerry. Okay. <laughs> so, Dak is looking at that like, well, hold on, Jerry. Mm -hmm. You got all this, bro. And you, even if you... Jerry, even if I never live up to it, I've never become Patrick Mahomes, I like to think that I've added some value to the franchise. I would like to think since I became the quarterback, the franchise has maybe gone up a couple hundred million dollars. Wouldn't you say, Skip, in the last four years? Okay, but he did budget for Dak Prescott. No, and dude. you said he offered a fair deal. Now, 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 fair, 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 fair. Whoa, 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 whoa. Fair, fair. Now, last time I went to the fair, I got cotton candy. I got a candied apple. Jenny, you know what? I, I even petted an elephant. That was the fair. Mm. I need something more than that, Skip Bayless. Mm. I told Skip, I tried to tell you. I said, Skip. You the, wanted him to overpay no, 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 Dak no, no. Prescott. But I tried to tell you. I said, Skip, Jerry's making a mistake. Do not let Carson Wentz, do not let Jerry Goff sign in front of him. Mm. Skip, if he give, offers him $36 million before those guys sign, Skip, I believe Dak take that. Mm. With, if, if what they're saying is true, we got 36 million, Dak, and we got 80 million at the time of your signing. Skip, that's an offer I believe Dak can't refuse. But because you wait and he saw what these other guys got with two years left, and he's like, I got no years left. Nah, bro, okay. miss me. You could be right about an early signing. Yes. Instead, he said, I'm betting on myself. And he had three huge games to start the year, and Shannon Sharp sat over there and said, garbage team. That's how you it was. Okay? Yeah. It was Giants at Washington, Miami at home. Yeah. Garbage, garbage, garbage. Yeah. Right? They yeah. turned out to be garbage, yeah. except the Dolphins started to find themselves. They did down the stretch. Year. Yes, they did. Okay. So then the last 13 games, seven of them, my partner across the table, a Hall of Famer, gave Dak Prescott Fs for No, I gave him what he earned. I didn't give him to him. Okay. He earned them. Okay, so he earned Fs from the Hall of Famer, yeah. Shannon Sharp. Seven out of the last 13. Yeah. That's more than half of them were Fs. Mm -hmm. He did not make the Pro Bowl, and my team did not go to the playoffs. So his bargaining power fell a little bit in Jerry's eyes, where Jerry's saying, I don't know. I'm not really seeing Patrick Mahomes here, but Dak. Skip, but when you go to the, and you love next level stats, when you look mm -hmm. at big time throws, when you look at clutch throws, Dak Prescott is behind Russell Wilson and Patrick Mahomes. Okay, Th but if you look at record against good teams, uh, plus 500 teams, above 500, he's not been very good. Skip, I yep. can't defend it. Skip, the Cowboys haven't been good against good teams since the mid 90s. Mm -hmm. So don't take that on Dak. Go look at Tony Romo's record. Mm -hmm. See what Dak is saying, Skip. I've seen you pay other quarterbacks. I've seen you pay other positions premium and not bad or not. Mm. But now you and Stephen Jones want to draw the line in the sand when it comes to me. Mm. I just need to know why. Okay. Yet, Jerry Jones on draft night went out and got Dak Prescott the most valuable new toy available in the draft. Fell right in their lap at number 17, C.D. Lamb. And all of a sudden, Dak's MVP odds vaulted. Skip. All of a sudden, he's up to third in some sports books MVP odds. Skip, I didn't need third. Skip, I didn't need that. Skip, I got a Ferrari, I got a Bugatti, I got a Lambo. Mm. I don't need a McLaren. Mm. I'm good. Mm. Give me the money that you spent on that McLaren. Mm. Go ahead and put that in my account. Mm. Do that for me. Do you know what will happen to your bank account if, as a Dallas Cowboy, you win a Super Bowl? You are a made man the rest of your gonna, life. I'll tell you what I want. You can print money. Oh, yeah, I'm about to. Yeah. That, Skip, you do know this. Mm. Dak Prescott win the Super Bowl. Mm. Oh, Patrick Mahomes. Go look like chicken feed. Because Dak Prescott, uh, if he wanted, think about this, Skip. He wanted Patrick Mahomes' money without Patrick Mahomes' resume. Mm -hmm. So imagine if he gets something on his resume that Patrick Mahomes got. And he's free? Mm. Oh, man, go on, get this thing down. Okay. If I don't know, I might Jerry, be Jerry, I told you, Jerry would be glad to pay him under those circumstances, especially if they won the Super Bowl, because Jerry talks often about his mortality. My days are numbered. He wants one more. And if Dak gave him one more, he would just open that. He would wreck his salary cap, and you would be happy, because you wouldn't have to deal with the well, Cowboys anymore. Dak, Rip, Dak Prescott win the Super Bowl. Todd Franz going into Jerry's office says, I want five years, $250 million, and I want $150 million at the time. And Jerry would take his rubber stamp and go, done. He goes like, no, he's going to say, well, I need to see one more year. They ain't going to do No, 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 no. Done. I, I got a feeling. Something, something tells done. me. Something, Jenny, something tells me don't they ain't going to do that. Don't win that Super Bowl. <laughs>
You picking them to win the Super Bowl next year? No. No, I'm not picking not them. Yet. I kind of want to because I want to see how much. Because everybody, oh, Jerry would pay this. Jerry would pay that. Jerry ain't going to pay nothing. If, if they get all the way, of course he's going to pay them. Mm -hmm. They win a Super Bowl? All well, the so why you pay he wants. Well, how many Super Bowl Tony Romo win? Zero. And he was the highest paid player in the NFL. How many Good championship point. games did he get to? Zero. Uh, yeah, and he's doing <laughs> just fine right and now. And then he doing really well. Uh, he's doing good. No mercy. Antonio Brown will receive an eight-game suspension after the league finished its probe into Brown's off-field issues. As part of the punishment, Brown is expected to continue receiving counseling, but is free to sign with any team. The Seahawks and the Texans have been rumored to be interested in the former All-Pro receiver. So, Shannon, I start with you. If you ran a team, would you be interested in signing AB? Do you give him a shot? Nope. Hmm. If I wish him the best. I believe he's paid his debt to society via fine. Uh, he's on probation. I believe he will, if he served this eight-game suspension, he would have paid his debt to the NFL. But I can't trust him. Skip, we can debate how good Antonio Brown is or isn't. We can debate that till the cows come home. But there's one thing that's beyond debate at this point. He quit on two teams. He quit on the Pittsburgh Steelers. Mm -hmm. He quit on the Raiders. That's yeah. fact. That's yep. not... Innuendo, mm -hmm. that's not speculation. That is factual. Mm -hmm. And for that, I cannot have him on my team. Now, mm -hmm. I wish him the best, and if somebody assigns him, I hope he goes out there and lights it up, and I'll be willing to live with that. But I can't trust him on my team. Now, I like to think that, Skip, if I'm running a team, I got a championship-caliber football team, mm -hmm. and I don't want anything to mess it up. The last thing I want to, to have to deal with is him late for meetings. And if I'm, a good if I'm a good team and I got young players, he's too influential. He's too influential, and I don't want that around my young players. Mm. You want guys with positivity. That's why Larry Fitzgerald has lasted so long. Mm. That's why Jerry Rice lasted so long. You notice mm. that, Skip? Yep. You notice? Mm -hmm. Because here's what happens. They'll tolerate you until they can replace you. And then once they can replace you, they move on. Guys will guys that don't give you a problem. You're like, man, how, how is that guy still a lead? He can't even play. He ain't a problem. Man, that guy can still play. He had to leave. He a problem. And Skip, I wish I could just say, Skip, that's not the way it is. But having played 14 years, having been around guys that have been a problem, and knowing that they could play, but it was too much for a team to deal with, you've covered this game for 40 years, and you know how it works, having talked to general managers and the head coaches, Skip, I wish Antonio Brown all the best. I hopefully, hopefully he's turned his life around off the field. Because on the field, we know what he can do. Mm. But I can't trust him, and I can't have him in my locker room. I highly respect everything you just said. I would take everything you just said to my bank. I'll go one cut deeper here. Obviously, he is now available to be signed. At, he could sign him now, but mm -hmm. he's available to play after the first mm -hmm. eight games. So you could have him for a half a season. Right. But I remind everybody, he still has a lawsuit pending, mm -hmm. hanging over his head, in which he was accused of sexual assault. Mm -hmm. And there was another very public accusation accusing him of sexual misconduct. Mm -hmm. So now that question will be brought to the desk of the owners of these teams because mm -hmm. somebody's going to have to sign off on oh, it. Yeah. Do we want him not just in our locker room but but under our our flag? You know, do we right. want him to represent our franchise? Knowing you're going to get blowback. Yeah. That's the same mm -hmm. thing, Skip, yep. when Andy Reid signed uh, Michael Vick. Mm -hmm. He knew that the fans, they're going to be their animal lovers out there, mm -hmm. and he knew they were going to line up in full force to show their disapproval for what he's done. So as long as you know, if you sign Antonio Brown, whomever it may be, mm -hmm. and it really needs to be a strong locker room, Skip, they must, must mm -hmm. have strong, strong leadership. And the quarterback must, must be the unquestioned leader. Yep. So what do we have? We have three of the top quarterbacks in this league, including the one, two quarterbacks in last week's NFL Top 100, 100 as voted by the players, all three campaigning to want to sign Antonio Brown. We have Lamar Jackson. We have Russell, uh, Russell Wilson. They, were, they want one, two in the voting, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. 
they are campaigning for different reasons for Antonio Brown, because obviously, in Lamar's case, he grew up in the same neighborhood, and uh, Hollywood well, Brown is, is a cousin doesn't. of Antonio. So you have sort of kinship there. Mm -hmm. In Seattle, they need a third receiver, and, and Antonio has the capability of being the first receiver. Right. He is that still dynamic, I believe. And you have that 43-year-old, happy birthday, Tom Brady, down in Tampa who has campaigned for him because he had him for a minute in Foxborough right. last year, and it clicked, albeit in a game against the Miami Dolphins. Right. But it was, they are rivals. Right. And again, he lit it up. Right. Four catches for 56 yards, touchdown. touchdown. So the point is, of all the locker rooms, I would think that could sort of handle Antonio, Tom Brady's locker room could, especially if Tom is signing off. I consider him one of, if not the greatest, certainly quarterback leader mm -hmm. in the history of this league. But what did his coach say several months back? His new coach, Bruce Arians, said, I had him as a young player in Pittsburgh. I coached him, and I do not want him because he would not be a fit for our locker room, Thank said you. Bruce Arians. Thank you. Who saw him up close and personal, albeit before he was and Tony, he, he wasn't A.B. yet. So that lets you know, mm -hmm. if he was like that, Skip, and he was Antonio Brown, what is he now as A.B.? And that's what Bruce Arians is saying. I had him, mm -hmm. and I didn't like the direction he it was did. heading in. No, he did not. Skip, I believe now, now maybe Russ could, could, could deal with it, because here's the thing, Skip. Antonio Brown had a stretch where he had, I think, six straight seasons, which he caught 100 balls. He's not catching 100 balls in Baltimore. So basically... I, I don't think he's catching 100 for any of these right. really good teams. Because yes. here's the thing, Skip. When you look at a situation, if you look at Baltimore's receivers, they're young or they're guys that were never superstar receivers. So it's okay. So there are going to be some games Lamar only throws the ball 20 times. Sure. Well, he's not going 20 for 20. Mm -mm. So now, okay, so Antonio Brown, you're going to be cool digging the safety out, cracking a linebacker, catching two passes for 24 yards. Mm -hmm. You're going to be gonna okay happen. with that. It would happen. As long as you're winning, would you be okay? Because no. his track record is no, he would not. Because, Skip, if you look at the guy that's bickering back and forth, well, I'm better than you. Well, I'm better than you. I'm better than you. What is based on? Stats. Mm. Ain't nobody talking about, well, well, he did win more games than you. Mm. They don't care about that, Skip. Mm -hmm. Everybody said, all I want to do is win. But can I get 10 for a buck, 52 mm -hmm. touchdowns in the process? Okay, let's throw him into the mix in Tampa right now. You have two Pro Bowl receivers split out. Let's put Antonio in the slot. I told you I like Scotty Miller, but I would love A.B. in the slot. Because remember, they lost Brashad Perriman, who once upon a time ran a 4-2-40. Mm -hmm. My only concern for the Bucs is they don't have one blazer. No. They don't have one, one who can just threaten and take the top off right. the defense. No, that's not is more of a possession, you know. But he's just going to go over the top of you. Yeah. Okay, we get that. But if you put A.B. in the slot with Gronk at tight end or O.J. Yeah. Howard at tight end or Cameron Braid at tight end, man, you, you would have explosion. You would have shiver me timbers, as right. the Pirates used to say, yeah. and these these are the Pirates. Right. These are the man, Buccaneers. Chris Godwin and right? Mike Evans are probably going to lose well, their mind. Okay, because they might because now <laughs> you do only have one football. Exactly. And it's, it's not like the NBA where – you can join forces, and then you score 29, and I'll score 28, and he can score 27. Right. It's not like no, that. No, 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 no. because your catches are going to dwindle down yeah. to two or three a game. Exactly. They might be big ones, but... I think the thing that helps A.B. Poss potentially getting signed, Skip, we know now. A.B. is going to miss eight games. There's no more speculation. Is he going to be suspended four games? Yep. Six games? Okay. Is it going to be the entire season? We know it's eight. If we sign him, we're going to miss him the first half of the season. We'll have him the second half of the season. Okay. So now that that's cleared up, now teams have a better picture. Now Seattle, Baltimore, or teams that are interested mm -hmm. can seriously do some, say, okay, what do you think? Guy? You get the heads together. Mm -hmm. You're like, okay, what do you think? You think this guy's a fit? You think he can fit with DK Metcalf? He can fit with Lockett? He can fit mm -hmm. with some of these other guys in the locker room? Can he fit in Baltimore? Okay. Baltimore, has, Baltimore skip locker room is, that, that's a good locker room. Okay, I got it. Now to ownership. Now back to sexual assault loss to suit still pending. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Baltimore. Steve Bashotti. What's on their track record? Ray Rice. Right. It, he went to hell and back over that one, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. do, do you think he'd be a little squeamish about A.B.? He might be. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Seattle. Now owned by the sister of Paul Allen, who passed away two years That's ago. Correct. Jody Allen now runs this operation. Mm -hmm. Think she'd love having A.B.? 
on her side? I don't know about that. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. How about the Glazer family in Tampa? Long ownership in the National Football League. I don't know if they would look the other way at this. I'm Cowboys. Sure. Cowboys are sad. Okay, maybe. But they took Greg Hardy. Yeah. I mean, Jerry they, has a track record. They, they, sure. They've taken a lot of guys with checkered path. Because at the end of the day, Jerry says, if you can catch, throw, or tackle, I forgive. I, I don't care about all the fans booing. Because okay, guess what? Okay. They booing from inside, which means they paid to get in here. Okay, but as much respect as I have for AB's ability at this point in his career, <sighs> I got a mark. Oh, you got better than oh, I, I got. Oh, Gallup, you got CD? I got CD. I think I'm good. Oh, yo, so CD better than AB. Hey, there's only one football, and it, it just ain't going to stretch far enough to get AB in that. Mix. Well, if I'm going, if you say you go on initials, I'm taking AB over CD. Really? Except I spell these initials out. <laughs> C-E-E-D-E-E. -E -E. <laughs> so that trumps A-B. I just can't skip. I, and I, like I said, I hope, hope A-B has turned his life around off field. So I, I. I mean, trust is a big thing in, in pro sport. Ooh. It is, and I just can't trust him. No, knowing that he did that, Skip, and it all did it for the play out, Skip. I mean, you can hear about certain things, and I've heard things about how he was handling himself in Pittsburgh, but to watch it in hard knocks. Everybody got an opportunity to see that. And then he put out his behavior on social media so even people that weren't watching Hard Knocks could see him how he was behaving yep. on his own social media post. Nah, I'm good. Okay, I'll sum this up by saying I, I still believe Tom Brady had one more conversation with B.A., as in Bruce Arians. Coach, we, we, we could do this. I, I can, it'll be okay. I, I'm, I'm close with him. It'll be cool. That's what he'll say. But they say, be, uh, uh, Tom, you ain't close with them guys outside. No. Nope. Skip, you, <laughs> you know how receivers are. It's already like, hold on, Chris Godwin made the list. I made the list. AB come in, cut these catches. I might be lower on the list than I were last year. I'm trying to move up the rankings, not slide down. No mercy. While Kawhi and the Clippers dismantled the Pelicans on Saturday afternoon, LeBron and the Lakers fell to the Raptors later that night, 107-92. Cal Lowry dropped 33 points in Toronto's bubble debut, while Los Angeles shot a season-low 35% from the field. LeBron scored 20 points, but Anthony Davis only had 14 after scoring 34 against the Clippers on Thursday. We're now joined by Fox NBA analyst Chris Broussard. Chris! Should the Lakers be concerned after losing really that big to the Raptors? Don't tell me I need to talk Shannon down off the cliff already. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not going to overreact to one loss. Uh, I think there was a little bit of a letdown after the big win against the Clippers, which was huge for the Lakers. It also locked up the number one seed for them. I think with LeBron, the question at 35 years old, for me at least, was would he come back rested or rusty? Because a lot of times at that age, you know, it may take you a little while to get going again after you've had a long layoff. And I think the answer is both. He's rested and he's rusty. So, But I have no doubt that by the time the games are important, certainly by the second round of the playoffs and probably the first round, he'll be back to midseason form. Anthony Davis, 14 points. That's an aberration. I know they double teamed him all night. He made the passes out of the double teams. But most nights, he, you know, he's not, you don't have to worry about him having a subpar game like that. The main concern for me, though, with the Lakers is their perimeter defense or their lack thereof. Without Avery Bradley, and at least for now without Rajon Rondo, they can't guard on the perimeter. You know, I mean, look at the you Deion Waiters, Alex Caruso, J.R. Smith. Which one of those guys is locking somebody down? Which one do you trust? Caruso's okay, but he's only going to play so many minutes. Obviously, you got Danny Green and Contavious Caldwell-Pope, who would seem to be your best defenders, but they're shooting horribly right now. Danny Green's 2 for 13, and KCP is 4 for 15 in the bubble. So they're not, you know, you got to get them off the floor because they're not making shots. So the Lakers, their perimeter defense is poor. We saw Kyle, at times you saw Kyle Kuzma trying to guard Kyle Lowry. That's why Lowry went for 33 points. In these two games in the bubble, the Lakers have given up an average of 15 three-pointers a game. No team in the NBA has averaged 14 points allowed, 14 three-pointers allowed in the regular season, let alone 15. So that's the main concern for me. The perimeter defense, when you look at the Raptors, now they're a hard-nosed team. They play incredibly hard. 
They're well coached. But they have struggled against the elite teams in the league, against Houston, Milwaukee, the Clippers, and the Celtics. The Raptors are 1-7. in seven. Against the Lakers, they're 2-0 and oh, because those three, three of those teams particularly have good perimeter defense. And Houston, at times, when they want to, can defend. Whereas the Lakers don't have the perimeter D, and I think that's why they've struggled with the Raptors. So that's my only concern with the Lakers. I think they can overcome it, but it's not good right now. Well, that's what I told Skip. I think the thing is, is that right now they can't knock down shots. Now, eventually, I see everybody else making threes. I mean, <laughs> Clippers couldn't miss from the three in the first half. The Celtics were knocking down three. We know that dynamic duo backcourt of Portland can hit the three-point shot. We see Houston. Yeah, they took 61, but they made 21 of them. And at some point in time, the shots that they're missing, because they're shooting 11% lower from the field, and they're shooting 8% lower from the three-point line. So I believe that once they get back to those levels, I'm not saying that the Lakers are, a li are, are the uh, Golden State Warriors that shooting threes in the, in that when they had that great stretch, but they're better than what they've shown in this bubble. And my biggest concern with the Lakers have always been guard the three point line. They give up far too many easy, uncontested threes. And a lot of that, Chris, is to your point, is that it's so hard for them to stay in front of people. And so when someone comes to help, the guy just kicks it to the three-point line and the guy's getting a wide open three. They let Kyle Lowry, once Kyle Lowry got going, he's a little bulldog. So once he got going, he's like, I'm going to take whatever I want from mo moving forward. And they had no answer for him. Danny Green became unplayable because like you said, yeah, he can give you some defense, but if he can't knock down wide open threes, he's of no use to you. And so the three starters, JaVale, Caldwell Pope, and Danny Green, had eight points. Eight points. That's not good enough. But I ain't worried about it. We're going to take it out on Utah tonight. Me and Skip got a bet. We got a case. Oh, we we got, do? A case, got a case to do on it right now. I thought you said no. I want it. You want it? Want it. What, what is it? Six and six a half? Six and a half. Six and a half. I got it. I got Utah with six and a half. Got right? it. Thank you. Wow. Done. I already won one case. You about to lose it back. Yeah, good. Here we go. <laughs> so is it my turn now? It's your turn. I am having a grand old time sitting back here listening <laughs> to both of you make excuses and trying to rationalize what really happened on Saturday evening versus Toronto. Chris Broussard. We're both from newspaper backgrounds. You, you effectively buried the lead of what really happened on Saturday <laughs> night. Let's go to the lead. The lead is that LeBron James came bursting out of the gate in the fourth quarter because he owns the first two minutes of every fourth quarter. And he made two big threes, first two of the night. And I thought, well, maybe they're off to the races here. They jump up 76 to 72 with 10 minutes and 23 seconds left. You're up four. You got the best player on the planet and another top five player. And what happens the rest of the way? You get outscored 35 to 16. You get outscored by 19 points over the last 10 and a half minutes of this game. Your best player on the planet, LeBron James, goes one for five, 0 for two from three. And the other guy called AD, it must now stand in fourth quarters for all done. AD stands for all done in the fourth quarter because he just disappears. In four fourth quarters against the Clippers and now one against the Raptors, he just shrinks and disappears. I don't know what happens to him. In four fourth quarters against the Clippers, he scored a grand total of 10 points. In those four fourth quarters, plus the one on Saturday against the Raptors, he has a grand total of two free throws attempted. Of course, he made both of them because he is a free throw making machine in the bubble. He's made 25 of 26 free throws on Saturday. He shot zero in the fourth quarter because he goes, we, we talk about LeBron being passive aggressive. I mean, AD all done is, is just not aggressive in the fourth quarter. If, if he even sniffs of a double team, he's just giving up the basketball. He does not want to assert himself. He does not want to try to impose his will in the fourth quarter the way he always does in the third quarter. He is Mr. Third Quarter. So I am not going to give LeBron and AD a pass for a pathetic performance down the stretch against a team that does have some grit and some toughness. We get that. But they don't have Kawhi Leonard, and they haven't been great against good teams. And that deserved a lot more criticism than what it got 
at least from across the table here on this show, because somebody <laughs> says he's not concerned when I think deep down he's scared to death about Trip what's going tonight, on. though. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. first of all, the question was, are we concerned? Uh, uh, admittedly, LeBron and AD did not play well. Right. But am I concerned about them going forward? Not really. Again, AD, you made good points. And you, you guys know, I've been on this show all year saying AD is going to have to become a fourth quarter scorer. I put it in the context of to beat the Clippers, but maybe we're seeing it, period. I mean, for most of the year, he averaged three points in the fourth quarter. The last month of the season before the lockdown, they kind of got him going more in the fourth and he played better. But that's becoming a problem and part of it, look at where he's shooting from. Why is he out there thinking he's Kevin Durant? You know, AD, part of the problem is what is he fantastic at offensively outside of free throws, Skip, to your point? You know, he's a very, he's a very good shooter for a big man. Yep. But not when you can, you know, if you look at regular perimeter players, he's nothing special on the perimeter. And in the post, he's pretty good, but he's not great. He needs to be going inside. Again, he is not Kevin Durant. He's not Dirk Nowitzki. He's not one of those seven-footers that's just gifted on the perimeter. So I think that's an issue. They need to have AD playing a little closer to the basket because his jumper is going to come and go. It's yeah. not going to be automatic like some of the great guys I mentioned. Yeah. Chris, Chris, what, what he does best in, in his whole offensive repertoire is draw fouls. He can draw fouls. He At least he does first quarter through third quarter because he he parades to the free throw line. The other day, I was just in awe. He, and it, it's automatic. It is a really sweet motion that he has. Great follow through, high arc, swishes nearly every free throw. And then in the fourth quarter, he, he so lacks aggression that, that he, he just doesn't even get to the free throw line and do what is best in his repertoire. I think. Yeah, I, I think. Go ahead, I'm Chris. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I think they made a mistake. You know, look, look, we look at the fourth quarter numbers. AD didn't score as much in the fourth. LeBron was one of the highest scoring fourth quarter guys in the league. But we know what we've seen LeBron enough delivering the playoffs. I know, Skip, you rip him, but he's got more game winning shots in the playoffs than Kobe and MJ. Okay, so we know LeBron can deliver down the stretch. I think they should have spent the season make, getting AD comfortable as the go-to guy in the fourth because there's going to come points in the playoffs, whether it's the Clippers or somebody else, where AD is going to have to be that guy. I think the thing is, is that we we're seeing is that Vogel is playing AD the entire third quarter, and then he's resting for, for the first six minutes of the fourth quarter. So you might have to, now I get the Clippers, because he had it going, the Clippers were starting to slip away from you, but AD got it going, and he kept you in the ball game. So I get riding him for the entire third quarter, but you might have to break it up, uh, uh, Chris. You might have to only give AD eight, nine minutes of the third quarter so you can bring he and LeBron back together again because you kind of sta you like staggering those guys. If you notice, AD plays the majority of the first uh, first quarter. LeBron comes out uh, uh, with at about the five-minute mark. He might come back in with a minute to go. Uh, and then he'll, AD will start the bench on the, in the second quarter. He'll start on the bench. LeBron comes back, and they come back in, and they normally finish together. But you might have to stack. You might have to uh, uh, AD minutes in the third quarter. Says AD, I can only play you eight to nine because I'm going to need to bring you back. I'm going to need you to be, get going a little earlier in the fourth quarter. But I ain't worried about it. We'll take it out on Utah tonight. Utah, y'all got y'all in for it. Final point. I'm going <laughs> to say it again. The closer for your Lakers is Kyle Kuzma. That's why they had him on the floor for most of the fourth quarter. They were waiting for him to start making big shots, especially three-point shots. Unfortunately, he got stuck having to guard six-foot-one Kyle Lowry, and he's what, what's Kuzma, six-eight? Six, eight. Mm -hmm. And he just couldn't stay with him, and he got tormented and, and frustrated on defense. He starts fouling. Obviously, Lowry makes a couple of big threes. Van Fleet's making threes. And you, you, you can't suffer through it. It's like you tell me about Lou Williams, the Lakers hut Lou when he's on the floor because he is their closer, but he can't defend. So you got a problem now without Avery Bradley being able to lock down a Kyle Lowry, you are going to miss his three and D. Hey, Chris, you know what I hadn't heard? Since we've been back in the bottle, the bubble, oh, LeBron don't play no defense. Have you heard that from somebody else we know, Chris? <laughs> 
<laughs> LeBron doing what he do. He has been LeBron playing hellacious defense. The guys on the other team. That's no, he, the problem. He, no. Somebody else to guard. I, exactly. He, he can't. He can't guard. He can't guard Siakam and OG and right. Kyle Lowry and Kawhi and Paul Siakam George and Lou Will. Siakam didn't have a big game. He did. Skip, are you back with the Clippers? Or I know you were talking Lakers last week. I loved how the Clippers bounced back. There was no hangover from what I considered a moral victory over the Lakers, and all they did was lead by 42 against the Pelicans in the third quarter. So I, I think they're back afloat. Hey, I, what, what did they bounce back from? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. you, I, hey, Chris, you remember we was growing up and you get a butt cut and you, your gr mama and your grandma said, boy, get in there before I give you something to cry about. Yep. You better bounce okay. back. We gave you okay. something to cry about. <laughs> <laughs> we gave you something to cry about, Skip. Utah plus six and a half. Thank oh, you. No mercy. The Rockets upset the box 120-116 last night despite a monster 36-point game from Giannis Antetokounmpo. Russell Westbrook led the way for Houston with 31 points, and the Rockets delivered some timely defense down the stretch, ending the game on a 16-4 run to seal the deal. So, Chris, on a scale of 1 to 10, how big of a threat are the Rockets? I'm going to say a 6. A 6. They're the third best team in the Western Conference. Behind the two L.A. teams. And the problem for the Rockets, of course, is they're going to meet one of those teams, the Clippers or the Lakers, in the second round. Now, right now, much to Shannon's chagrin, it would be the Lakers in the second round. And if I had to pick one of the L.A. teams who I think the Rockets have a, the best chance of beating, upsetting, it would be the Lakers for the reasons we talked about in the last segment. The Lakers have trouble guarding the perimeter. And that, of course, is the strength of the Houston Rockets. So I think they would give the Lakers some headaches and push them in a really tough series. And I'd give them a, a, a decent chance of beating the Lakers, although I'd favor the Lakers. So I, I, the things I like about the Rockets, since they've gone small ball, they have become less Harden-centric. So now the dynamic between James Harden and Russell Westbrook now is much more of a two-headed monster rather than being a definitive Harden first option, Russell second option. I mean, Russell's taking more shots than Harden in these two games in the bubble, and he's averaging 31 points, eight assists, eight rebounds, and Harden, of course, had the big 49-point night, so he's still able to get his, too. So I love that the offense is less predictable because it's a two-headed monster, and then defensively, as they showed in the bubble, the two games, they're not a bad defensive team down the stretch. In the fourth quarter against Dallas, when they came back and won that game, Dallas is the most, the best offense in the league as far as offensive rating, and they held them to 20 points in the fourth quarter. And then, of course, yesterday against the Bucks, they forced 23 turnovers and did a good job guarding them in the fourth quarter. So Houston, like I said, I, I've said all season, they're the third best team in the West. But with Russell, they keep you off balance because of his intensity and his speed. And then Harden dominates the half court. So they're a, I give them a six. They're a tough team. Mm. Chris Broussard, you and I have been covering this league for a long time, me longer than you. I've been studying this league for a long, long time. I have never, ever <laughs> seen anything like these Houston Rockets. I've never <laughs> seen anything... I, I've never seen a game won the way last night's game was won, which is why my scale of 1 to 10, my confidence in them as a threat is all the way up to an 8. I have liked so this team. to the finals? Eight no. To get to the no, finals. but they're going to scare the hell out of whoever they play. I could see them winning a couple of rounds. I could see them knocking off the Lakers if you're talking about a second-round matchup. But the point is, they are finally playing. De um, Mike D'Antoni team is playing defense in ways that I never thought was imaginable because they disrupted a very good Bucks offensive team last night. They hounded them. They harassed them. They did force 23 turnovers. They stole the ball. They deflected passes. They got in their way. They got under their skin. They got in their hair. They got inside their psyche and down the stretch, the Bucs looked laughably out of sync because they could not run their offense against Harden and Westbrook 
and Covington and this defensive team. So, again, they got out-rebounded last night by 29 <laughs> points in the paint, 60 to 20 for the Bucs. 60 to 20? The Rockets missed 43s, and I told Shannon earlier, I think 35 of them were what I would consider wide-open threes, and those 35 included maybe 30 short corner threes. They're just wide open. P.J. Tucker had a miserable night, but he made three that really helped. James Harden had a miserable night shooting threes. He was only three for 12, and it didn't matter because they did make 21 out of 61 threes. So they outscored them 21 to, what, nine from the three-point line. That'll work. Mm -hmm. And they outscored them by 10 from the free throw line. That will really work. So all of a sudden, that's a plus 46 points, and you offset the small ball versus the Giants. They turned Brooke Lopez into a big, bad bully in the fourth quarter, and I was screaming at my TV. He was shacking yeah, him. Yeah, put, put Tyson <laughs> Chandler in. They got Tyson on the bench. I love Tyson Chandler. I know he's 37 in year 19, but he's seven feet one, and at least he could have bothered Brooke Lopez for five minutes in the fourth quarter. But no, Mike D'Antoni just folds his arms over there and says, watch me, watch my genius at work. <laughs> so now they have two Steve Nashes penetrating, and Nash could never get to the rim and the free throw line the way these two guys can, one from the left, one from the right. And they're drawing every buck into the middle of the, the, the paint, and all of a sudden everybody's wide open on the perimeter, and Russ and James seem to be willing passers. They're going to get a whole bunch of wide open threes, if they can make 35, 38% of them, you're going to lose because it's going to be too many points to overcome when they're shooting 61, which tied the all-time regular season record for a game that didn't get to overtime. Well, if they make 38% of their threes, they beating everybody. Everybody. They go, get, they go get up 50 to 60. Yep. So if they're getting yep. up that many threes, how do you win a game? As Skip mentioned, Chris, they were out-rebounded by 29. They were out-rebounded 17-6 on the offensive end. You hold them. Uh, the, uh, the Rockets shot less than 40% from the floor, less than 35% from the three. But as you mentioned, they forced Milwaukee into 20-plus turnovers. They only had nine. And that was the difference in the ball game the other night against uh, the Mavericks. You mentioned they have the number one offense efficiently, uh, efficiency. But what I say about offense or defense, it only matters can you get done what you need to get done when you absolutely had to have it. Look at Dallas down the stretch and see how many times they turned the ball over. Look at Milwaukee yesterday Ooh. when they had that lead down the stretch, how many times they turned the ball over and allowed the Rockets to get back into it. But the number one thing the Rockets have going, Russell Westbrook says, even though I'm going to a team that they want to shoot 53s a night, that's not my game. I'm a mid-range, drive the ball to the bucket guy. Russ has attempt, attempted three uh, uh, threes yesterday, and his mid-range game is where he's most lethal. So he's driving the ball, putting pressure on you at the rim, or he's walking up to you because you got to get on your heels because he can still go by you. And so he's getting that shot anytime he, want, anytime he wants it. Russ has been the difference to me because people talk about all these other guys, but the second half of the season, he's been as good as anybody. And if you let them shoot that many threes, and they can shoot, skip, I mean, Chris, Skip, if they shoot 38% from the three, somebody's going to catch hell beating them because they put up too many to shoot that good. And you're like, 38, that's nothing. But when you shoot 55, 60 threes, that's going to be about 65 points per night. I don't know if they can shoot that, but they're going to put up, they're going to put up 40, 45 threes every night. You just hope they're off because if they're on, because I told people when in this when this restart in the, uh, the scrimmage, James Harden looked like he was on the mention. Oh, oh, skinny James, man! They talk about hey, they talk about skinny gal and skinny cow. I'm talking about skinny James Harden. He letting people have it. Well, and some of it too. I mean, they don't necessarily have to be that on fire from three because you guys know the math that has led to this revolution in the NBA, particularly with Mike D'Antoni and Dave. Daryl Morey and some of the other guys that throw up a bunch of threes. If you shoot 33% from three, that's the equivalent of 50% from two, which, as we all know, growing up the 80s, 90s, early 2000s, 50% from two is great. Yes. Any team would take that. So D'Antoni's like, look, we they shot 34% yesterday from three. 
But that was enough to make up for the rebounding loss. So that's their whole formula. And then they try to get to the paint and draw fouls and get points from the foul line. I'll say this about Russ and Harden. And I think that Clay and Steph are the best backcourt in NBA history. But Steph, Harden and Russ are, I, I don't even think this is really controversial. They're the most talented and backcourt ever and the most individually accomplished, where both, you know, both guys individually one, accomplished. Yeah, yeah. If they, I don't think any of us think they're going to win a championship, but if they somehow could, what it would do for the legacies of these two guys, because they both have the great individual stuff, it would be incredible. And everybody's assuming it would be Harden that would lead them. But maybe it's Russ. Russ is just as good in his own way. It, they're just different, but they're really very close as far as effectiveness. But they're the, they're the back up, uh, backcourt up in the Northwest. They coming. They coming for them boys and them no more light-skinned fellas in the Bay Area. Mm. They coming. <laughs> CJ and Dane, they <laughs> coming. Mm. <sighs> so They're nice. I, I never thought I would say this about a Rockets team led in part by <laughs> James Harden. I never thought I would compliment these guys for having supreme mental toughness because I never thought James really did when push came to shove. But Friday night, I got to watch them come back from seven down with 45 seconds left against Dallas. Last night, they were eight down with three minutes left against a, an even better Milwaukee team. And I thought, game over. Nope. Here they came again. And they won by four because, as Russ said right after the game on uh, ABC, it was, he said, adversity showed up and we showed out. And they did. They did. They, they beat adversity. And I never thought I would see that kind of grit and, and reach down, you know, from the soul, mental toughness in Houston Rockets, but they got it this year. Yeah, they're, they're tough. And, you know, and Harden still has to prove it. I mean, I, look, he's been, he's had some great playoff games, and we know he's had some really bad some duds. Yeah. Yeah, so I don't think we can give it to him that he's totally overcome it yet. He's obviously got to do it in the playoffs, but I think Russ helped. I think Russ's presence, because even though CP3 was great, Chris Paul, he doesn't put you, like, Russ just puts makes the defense so uncomfortable yep. because he's always charging at you, and Chris didn't do that, and I think that helps James. Hmm. Good, good stuff, guys. Really interesting. Rockets, fascinating to watch right now. Chris Broussard, I have a feeling we'll check in with you plenty throughout the next couple days. Thank you so much for joining us today. No mercy. While the majority of coaches and players continued kneeling during the national anthem over the weekend, there were a few notable exceptions. Orlando's Jonathan Isaac and Portland's Myers Leonard both stood while the rest of their teammates kneeled in their respective games. An outspoken Spurs coach, Greg Popovich, also stood alongside assistant Becky Hammond in San Antonio's bubble debut. When asked about his choice after the game, Pop said, quote, I'd prefer to keep that to myself. Everybody has to make a personal decision. So, Shannon, do you have a problem with anything that you saw? No. Um, I just wish the media would stop focusing on it. Um, the, you're, you're focusing on what some people view as negative. If the guys don't want to kneel, that's okay. That's well within their right, Skip. Just like the guys that do take a knee, that was within their right. The guys that don't, that's within their right. I think there's far too many positive things going on because, Skip, every press conference that I've heard, guys have mentioned why they're in the bubble and what they're trying to bring attention to. Mm -hmm. So they've kept the focus on the things that, is, that it needs to be on. Miles Leonard, you know, he, he says he has family in the military. Okay, that's fine. He says, look, I talked to UD. I talked to Ig Iggy. Uh, Andre Iguodala, and uh, they explained to me, and what he's doing, he and his wife has donated $100,000, Skip. The Supreme Court says felons, they, they gave fel uh, felons, convicted felons, their right to vote. But if you have outstanding fines, you can't vote until they're paid in full. So LeBron James also has donated money, his foundation. Miles Leonard, there have been others that have vote, donated money to the, uh, to the, I think it's in Florida, that to get these fine paid so these guys, these young men and women, will have the ability to vote. Skip out of, look, let's not vilify. And Charles said, let's not vilify people that's not kneeling. Charles Barkley. Charles yeah. Barkley. Mm -hmm. Let's not vilify those that are not kneeling like they vilified Colin Kaepernick that did kneel. Mm. And at this point in time, Skip, I want to make something abundantly clear to people. There's two things at play here. What's going on right now, Skip, is a demonstration. A demonstration is there's nothing to lose.
There's no chance of being arrested. There's no chance of a fine. There's no chance of being suspended. Colin Kaepernick protested. Mm -hmm. He lost his job. Mm -hmm. Muhammad Ali protested. He lost three years of his career. John Carlos and Tommy Smith at the Six State Olympics back power. That was a protest. See, a protest, Skip, you have to be, you have to be willing to lose something. Mm -hmm. Either your livelihood. John Lewis protested. Got hit upside his head. He almost lost his life. Mm -hmm. Dr. King, when they were doing these marches in Birmingham, when they were doing these sit-ins, that's a protest because there's something at stake here, Skip. You could be arrested. Mm -hmm. You could be killed. You could lose your job. These are demonstrations. Okay. There's nothing to lose here, Skip. This be, the end up because guess what the NBA said? We have a rule that you need to stand. I think it went in place in 1981, but we're going to lax the rules and says, okay, mm -hmm. we understand. There's no threat of losing your job. There's no threat of being arrested. So there's two things at play: a demonstration and a protest. Okay. This is a demonstration. Got it. Okay. I'm going to walk through each of these these decisions made by three different people Correct. one at a time. Let's okay. start with poor Jonathan Isaac. And I say, God bless you, Jonathan Isaac, because he tore his ACL right. last night. So this happened before he tore his ACL, mm -hmm. the game before. Obviously, he was the first, obviously, young black player in the right. NBA just to say, no, I'm not going to kneel, and I'm not going to wear a Black Lives Matter T-shirt. Right. He was recently uh, ordained as a minister mm -hmm. back in just March. Right. So recently, he became mm -hmm. a minister. And his point was basically that all lives matter, which is a flashpoint that you didn't love, no. right? And no. a lot of people no. in Black Lives Matter right. movement did not love mm -hmm. that. But he's saying all lives are supported through the gospel. So I, I don't believe this is the way. He, he obviously said, I, I'm, I'm for black lives. I'm for all lives matter. Mm -hmm. So, again, you've had issues with Christianity because over the years, back through history, Christianity has been used to, the Bible has been used to rationalize slavery and other, mm -hmm. uh, you know, sort of demeaning of, the, of uh, black people. Of people, oppression. Yes. So are you okay with this one young black man saying, well, no, I see it very different. I'm Christian and I'm going to, I'm not going to kneel or wear a T-shirt. Skip, the problem that I have is that he used religion because you have to ask yourself in a situation like this, what would Jesus do? There were I told you what, what I think Jesus would exactly. do. Exactly. He would have been out there marching, protesting, sitting in the street. He, he couldn't he do everything. He couldn't be everywhere at mm -hmm. once. No, but he would. But when, there. There, when people were needed, he was there. And if he'd been in the bubble, he would have knelt. That's what That's I all believe. I'm saying. Okay. Let's go to Greg Popovich. Okay. <sighs> Remember, graduated from Air Force Academy, mm -hmm. did his five year stint in the Air Force, considered going into the CIA, so his roots are deep in the military, Correct. okay? And he has been consistently scathing in his criticism of our president, correct. correct? Yes. And he's been consistently extremely supportive of Black Lives Matter. From, from the jump. Okay, uh, I make a quick uh, aside comment here on Greg Popovich. The irony is sometimes I think he's more like our president than he would like to be <laughs> because he can be a bully in media, yeah. especially um, reporters who ask, but, but especially post game when they ask fair and objective questions, he shames them just the way our president <laughs> shames people in press conferences. And then it appears that Coach Popovich was not good with Colin Kaepernick kneeling because he just basically said he he wouldn't say why, but it was clear it was because of his military background, the way he looks at that mm -hmm. flag. That's one line you don't cross. Right. So so I'm pretty sure. Coach Popovich was not good with Colin Kaepernick protesting that way. Right. Okay? Just for the record. Okay. And you can take it or you can leave it, okay. which brings us to Myers Leonard. And he was the first to admit, I'm a basket case. I'm a zombie right now. I haven't slept over this. I think he really wrestled with it. He said so he talked I. to family members and to Navy SEALs that he knows. Mm -hmm. Not those Navy right. SEALs that had those attack dogs. And the guy had the Colin Kaepernick jersey on, no, and he had no, four no. dogs. Not no, those guys. Okay. Okay. But go ahead, Skip. You know. Could be. Okay. I don't know. But he said that you can be a patriot and support Black Lives Matter, too. And this has been another issue that you've had issues with. Mm -hmm. Because, well, what, what, are they, they can't go hand in hand. Right. And, and he's like, they're mutually exclusive. So he wore a Black Lives Matter T-shirt, mm -hmm. but said, no, I can't do that. Right. I can't kneel because that's... I don't kneel during right. our national anthem. Right. Again, you've had issues with that before. Because, Skip, it's almost yeah. like if you're kneeling, you're taking, you're protesting the military. You're kneeling, you're protesting the flag. You're kneeling, uh, mm -hmm. is the, the, the Bible, 
is that, and my thing is with, with the Bible, is that people cherry pick it, parts of the Bible yep. to suit the cause at the time in which they're talking about. It says, see, here it is right here in the Bible, right there in black and white. There's but much to cherry pick yeah, in the Old Testament. Exactly. Yes. And a lot of people mm -hmm. cherry pick different parts of the Bible mm -hmm. to accentuate. Because, Skip, remember they used that. Blacks and whites were not supposed to be together. That's what they said in Jim mm -hmm. Crow. That's why they tried to keep, well, it started okay. in, in slavery. But that's what they used to try to keep blacks and whites from being together. You're not supposed to be in the same classroom, the same neighborhoods, and you're definitely not supposed to be in a relationship. Mm -hmm. Although Mr. Tom was sneaking in the cabin for years and hundreds of years before then. But that's a different story. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about that on another show, Skip. So with that being said, and not a military. Skip, they, people don't realize the military didn't become desegregated until 1948. Harry Truman signed an executive order, 9981. So prior to that, Skip, I could go fight for the country. I got you. But I got to die with my own black brother, even though we fighting for the same thing, the freedoms. Mm -hmm. But when I come back, guess where I'm going, Skip? I fought for freedom in Germany for people so we could have freedom around the world. But when I come back, I'm going right to the back of the bus. Yep. Damn, I can't even go in this restaurant after I gave you my life. I can't even go in this restaurant. Okay. So people need to, Skip, look, I don't have a problem. But just, you know, guys, I just have my personal reasons. Don't expand on it. Because it looks, it looks ridiculous. It, it makes it seem as if them, the players that are taking a knee, they're protesting the military. The military don't own the flag, mm -mm. and the, the, the flag, it, it, when the flag, rep and, and what those players are basically saying, when that flag represents everything, what it said it was going to be. But I said, Skip, the flag represented exactly what it was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. They say, well, all men are created equal, where there was no women and there was no blacks in mm -hmm. the writing of the Constitution. Mm -hmm. So it was red. So when they say all men. All white men are created equal. The Constitution, America, is, ex is a running exactly mm -hmm. how our founding fathers intended it to run. Mm -hmm. Nothing more, nothing less. So stop this notion. Okay. I can't believe America is like this. Yes, you can, because America was set up to be just like this. All of which I have big problems with all three of these issues faced by these three who made the decision not to kneel. Mm -hmm. Black Lives Matter is so crucial. It's so important to our country right now. Right. A little door has been cracked open. Right. And we've got to continue to run through it. And it's not too much to ask these three decision makers just to kneel one time, mm -hmm. just to show their support. It's, it's not going to be blasphemy. It's not going to defile the flag. Right. It's just kneel one time because it's very important right Skip, now. Skip, I don't, like I said, I don't know Jonathan Isaac. Uh, I don't know a whole lot about him and, and didn't really know a whole lot until he didn't stand. And it became an issue because then now he's the first player yep. that didn't take a knee in the bubble. And so that's what he's known. Now he was, that's what he was known for, Skip. And he's a black player. And, and he's yeah. black. Yeah. And Miles Leonard, he, Skip, for me, I'm more about, I'm more about deeds than gestures. Mm -hmm. His deed is, hey, here's some money. I'm going to try to help these, these convicted okay. felons get their voting rights back. Coach Popovich, I believe his voice. Mm -hmm. I believe he's done things behind the scenes. Coach Popovich strikes, strikes me as a guy, Skip. He doesn't want a whole lot of credit for things that he's doing behind the scenes. I believe Coach Popovich, Coach Pop is working hard behind the scenes, be it monetary or whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. So, Skip, for me, Skip, I, I don't have a problem with it, but I just wish guys, and we're less media, let's stop focusing on it. Let's talk about the guys. Ask the guys, okay, guys, I saw that you were kneeling. What, what would you hope to happen through this kneeling? What do you hope, what do you want America to be? And let's talk about, let's talk about the positive, and we can stay away from the negative, and people deem that as a negative. But I'm afraid, Skip, this is only the beginning, because you know it's coming in the football. You know it's coming. Uh, agreed, especially the first few weeks. Yes. Yeah. No mercy. Get this, guys. According to a report in The Athletic, the Lakers have stopped doing their morning shoot-around on game days because LeBron and Anthony Davis don't want to participate. While the Lakers do have access to a gym on the morning of games, it's a voluntary activity, and LeBron often isn't there. The reason, a source said that LeBron and AD, quote, kick ass when we don't do it. <laughs> so that is it, Shannon. Big deal or no big deal missing shoot-around. Good enough reading for me. Yeah, man, for you. I mean, is you, it my turn? No, not no. your turn, no. <laughs> Skip, it's not a big deal. I mean, you always, you know what, you, I know what you're trying to do. I didn't even speak yet. <laughs> you're trying to sow dissension. Like you always tell me, you're trying to ruin my Cowboys salary mm -hmm. cap you are. by paying back all this. Skip, it's nothing. <laughs> it's the two, I mean, it's hard for me to see a scenario that the two best players on any given team don't have the lion's share of the say 
and when practice is or when practice isn't, when shoot around is or when shoot around isn't. I, it's hard for me to believe that, Skip. That's the way basketball works. Basketball is a superstar-driven league. Mm. Now, NFL, I don't care if Tom Brady say you don't want to practice. Tom Brady going to be there. That, that's just the way it is. Coach said to practice. The, the thing was, Skip, I remember we used to have, like, obviously, we play on all, you know, we practice on all the holidays unless it falls on a Tuesday. But sometimes Christmas falls on a Wednesday or Thursday or Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving was always Thursday. Mm -hmm. We had practice. Now, Christmas was very unique. We knew one thing. Whenever John, whatever John said was when we're going to practice. If John kids wanted to wake up early <laughs> and, and, and open their presents, okay. guess what, Skip? We were coming in and right? we coming. If they want to do it late, so be it. But we, were, were you going to skip practice? No, ain't no, no skipping. No, 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 no. Ain't no skipping okay. practice. Thank you very <laughs> much. Your butt going to be there. So that's just the way it is. And guess what? We have shoot around today. Watch what we do to the Jazz tonight. Really? No. Huh, interesting. So here I gave LeBron James all these compliments. I, I just was effusive, over the top. Way to go, LeBron. You have sacrificed everything to be in the bubble with the fellas. Yep. You are treating this like you are the Los Angeles University Lakers. You're a college team. You're, you're, it's almost like you're an AAU team in yeah. the bubble. You're there with the guys. Right it, it, it's all the basketball all the time. And then I read this and I say, what? He and AD, you're five minutes from the gym. This is so much easier than a usual road city shoot around where you might have to ride 20, 30 minutes On in the bus. bus, right? Yeah. Did Michael Jordan ever miss a shoot around when he was healthy? No, he just didn't. Probably. Because He's got gym rat in him. He wanted to go to shoot around and get up some shots to work on well, it. Well, sometimes they had a uh, uh, the shoot around in the casino. Uh -huh. So he just lead right, he lead right for the black uh -huh. jack table. You got <laughs> jokes. You got jokes. <laughs> The other point of the shoot-around is you go over your defensive rotations for the, the opponent of the night. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. We're going to do this if he does that. Right. And it's always different. So I guess they're just doing it virtually. I don't know how yeah. they're doing it, from their room. Yeah. So they don't want to have to wake up and go to shoot-around. This is a bad sign because uh, what do the numbers tell me? I know it's not a big sample size, but through the first two games, your Lakers from three are shooting 28%. You like that? Where the other guys you need to go. But hold on, Skip. If they've been 28%. If they've been doing it like this, if they've been missing shoot around or they've been neglecting shoot arounds before, what's the difference? What, what's not clear about the story, did it just start in the bubble or is right. this back, exactly. back into exactly. the, the regular exactly. season? Exactly. I don't know. I don't know either. Well, okay, so what is LeBron James from the field right now in two games? Not good. He's shooting 38% during the what what was the regular season pre-pandemic, he was 50%. Yeah, we'll get back to So we're he's down to 38%. We're going to finish that. Maybe he needs to shoot around. No, no, we Maybe gonna... he needs to get some shots You up. know what? I'm just thinking. Huh. Take the jazz and call me in the morning. That's what the doctor The uh, doctor just prescribed. Take the... one jazz and yeah, call me in the morning. Yeah, call me in the morning. Really? So watch this 30-point triple dub tonight. Really? Yep. Huh. All I know is... This is a bad sign. It ain't no bad for, sign. For a team, when, when your two superstars can tell the coach what we're not going to do, and again, it's Vogel. Could, could you do this to, back in the day, Phil Jackson? No, he, he wouldn't have accepted. He'd say, no, you are going to be there, whether you like it or not. Kobe, Shaq, you're going to be there, when, and they always were there. When this is a stop. Stop sign for Skip Baylor. Stop trying mm. to make something more than what it is. Could, it ain't going to happen. Could any Spurs say, uh, Pop, uh, I, I don't think I'm going to... Kawhi did it for 73 he games. He's like, pay. Pop, I ain't playing. Well, he but quit on the whole team. Okay, he didn't even show up for any games or anything. Okay. Okay, then. And what happened? He got his butt out of town to Toronto, and, and, and he successfully duped the whole world. So let me ask you a question. You believe last year in Toronto, Kawhi was at every shoot-around? I would say he'd be at every shoot-around on game day. If he, I mean, if he's going to play in the game. Yeah. Well, he, he, missed, he missed 22 of them. Okay, so he missed 22 shoot-arounds. But that was already decided pre-game. Okay, so we decided this. Okay. We made some last-minute addendums to, <laughs> to the contract. If Mike Shanahan were the coach of these Lakers, nah, nah, would nah, he nah. accept that? He would Scott, not accept you that. You know it's different than football than well, basketball. I, it shouldn't be. <laughs> it is, though. It's a mentality, <laughs> no, no. And, and maybe they're lacking a little mental toughness in commitment. One, one or two superstars in basketball really control the whole dynamic of the team. You know that. That, that's just the way it is, Skip. I, and and, I, I, and I, I see the way the coaches interact with the players and how they talk to the players. 
They, the coaches don't get on the superstar mm -hmm. players. Do you think when LeBron was in Miami with D Wade playing under Pat Riley, do you think they said no to shoot arounds? They did not. That was Skip, LeBron's a little older now. Mm. He's a little older now. Like you told me, we, we trying to save some of these minutes. Mm. If I know Shannon Sharp, and I think I do, you do not love this. Skip. This is another bad sign. Watch tonight. After tonight, you're going to say, LeBron, you should not even You know what? As a matter of fact, don't even go to practice. Forget shoot around. Mm. Just show up at the game. Really? After what he do tonight. Well, he's so good, he doesn't need practice. After tonight. He's, got, he's played the third most minutes in NBA history, so who needs practice? Who needs shoot arounds? Who needs Ain't anything? Ain't nobody practicing during the season anyway, Skip. Mm. Basically, I mean, you fly I to one city. I think the story to... said they're not practicing either. No. So. Yeah. You, you should know now. How about this? Danny Green, shot wide open, knock it down. KCP, shot wide open, knock it down. How about that? That's all we're asking, guys. We're not asking for much. We're not asking you to do anything that you haven't been doing all season. Mm. Just give us what you've been giving us all season long. That's good enough. Nothing more, nothing less. So my conclusion to this is after all the bubble trouble <laughs> that the Clippers have <laughs> suffered through, it is now advantage Clippers over Lakers psychologically. Well, you didn't worry about Aries telling you that uh, Sweet Lou was in there ordering them wings. Yep. And she was dancing for him. Aries. Aries? Yeah, Aries would get dancing. Do you have some knowledge <laughs> of Aries? I, I, she put it out there. Oh, uh -huh. she did? Yeah, she I put it out there. Really? And now yeah. you're putting it out there as well. Oh, she lemon pepper Lou. Yep. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I had a feeling that would come to the today, somehow, some way. Oh, and by the way, Shannon or Steve, yeah. I don't think either of you would miss shoot around. There's no way nah. that's in your DNA. So moving on from there. No, no mercy. A Sports Illustrated column explored potential trade options for Dallas if the Cowboys end up moving on from Dak Prescott. And one that raised a lot of eyebrows was going after Aaron Rodgers. The former MVP has been pretty vocal that he thinks Green Bay wants to move on to Jordan Love sooner rather than later. And keep in mind, his former coach Mike McCarthy now runs the show in Dallas. So, Shannon, if this hypothetical scenario came to pass and they could trade for Rodgers, should the Cowboys do it? Mm -hmm. Didn't Aaron Rodgers want to get, get rid of Mike McCarthy? Mm -hmm. That's now what he, I agree. That, now he want to go back and join him, Skip? Mm. He, well, I don't know. He would want to do I it. I know what I'm saying, though, but you uh, like, you get massages. Hold on. We supposed to be at walkthrough and you get massages. Uh, Are you going to criticize him? Uh-huh. Uh uh. Skip, look. Yeah, I just find it hard to see a scenario in which the Green Bay Packers would trade Aaron Rodgers to a conference opponent. I mean, Green Bay was like, no, we're not trading you, Brett Favre, to Minnesota or nobody in the NFC. Now, we're going to put your butt in the AFC, and then they put in the contract, if you trade him, you got to give us three first-round picks. So it put a poison pill in there. Skip, I don't see a scenario where Green Bay is going to trade Aaron Now, right, I think they're talking about Dak for Aaron Rodgers. You, so Dak goes to Green Bay. Well, you can't trade. Why would Green Bay trade when you just took a quarterback in the first round? Mm -hmm. And Dak's not under contract. You can't trade a free agent. Now, if you franchise him, Skip, mm -hmm. you remember last year the Houston Texans had franchised of Davian Clowney. He says, okay, I will sign the tender if you trade me to Seattle. Correct. But if I'm if I'm Dak Prescott, why would I want to get traded to Green Bay when you just took a quarterback in the first round? So, Skip, I, I read the article. I'm like, this is too hypothetical. Okay, but obviously, if they had Jordan Love for a year and they decided for whatever reason he's not all that he was cracked up to be, he's not what we thought well, he how, was. How are you going to find that out when Aaron Rodgers is going to be there for this year? I don't know. Maybe he'll play some games, or maybe even in practice they take looks at him and they say, I, I, he's not what we thought. Aaron Rodgers say, look, they got him, Skip, look here, man. You got the man drinking tequila already. The man was drinking Doors. He was drinking Doors with mm -hmm. Johnny Walker. And now you got the man taking tequila. Four fingers. Yeah, you got to take it to the dome. Mm. So, no, leave the man alone. He ain't going to the Cowboy. Oh, now you want him now, huh? I, I don't want him. You didn't ask for my, my answer to this. Now oh. it's my turn. Okay. Why would I want <laughs> a diva quarterback <laughs> at age 37 who's been in decline for the last four years and who hasn't been to a Super Bowl for 10 years. Why would I want that guy? Green Bay doesn't want him. Why would I want him? They're trying to phase him out as we speak. So why would I want to bring him back to a coach who fell apart with him in the first place? Yeah. I'm good with Dak Prescott. I still love Dak Prescott. I just don't think he deserves $45 million a year like Patrick Mahomes. I'm still glad he's my quarterback. Unfortunately... I think the clock is ticking on him being my quarterback yeah. because of two franchise tags, <laughs> and you better go win a Super Bowl or you're going to be gone because Jerry's not going to pay you 
the third tag, which which skyrockets into the 50 million. Well, well, Skip, my thing is, if you don't believe in him after the first tag, why would you tag him a second tag? Let him go. Well, it depends how the year plays out. No, he has a good it. year. Don't worry about it. No, just let it go. Let Maybe it they go. lose in the championship game, and you say, let's run it back. No, Jackson, no, I ain't no. running nothing back. Okay. Well, why would I want Aaron Rodgers when I've never believed in him anyway? He, he has been... Slowly but surely, his QBRs have fallen each of the last four years, along with his completion percentage. Well, you Why keep, would I want that? You keep telling me that, that Aaron Rodgers hadn't been to a Super Bowl in a decade. Aaron Rodgers hadn't done this. But Aaron Rodgers has been to what? He went to Seattle, lost to the Falcons, he lost to San Fran, and he won again. So he's been to four NFC Championship games in the last decade. How many have the Cowboys been in in the last two decades? Mm. That many? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So you keep on talking about Aaron Rodgers in decline, so when are the Cowboys are gonna is gonna ascend? When are they going to ascend? Because mm -hmm. they've done nothing but decline mm -hmm. since '95. Okay, so in one year from now, if you're running the Dallas Cowboys, if you're Jerry Jones, you would take Aaron Rodgers over Dak Prescott? No, I didn't done pay Dak. See, I wouldn't even be in this situation if I was running. The okay, team. but again, hypothetically, if it came to that, because you've fallen apart with Dak Prescott, because their bad blood do not invite him now. He and yeah, Jerry. Yeah, Skip, if. If the situation between Aaron Rodgers and Mike McCarthy is okay, sure. But I'm not so sure Aaron Rodgers wants to be paired with McCarthy or McCarthy wants to be paired because I'm sure, Skip, anytime you get fired, you start hearing, well, you know, such and such didn't want you. Mm. Well, you know what he said, and you know what that said. You know what I'm saying? So things get said. Things get, you know, loose lips. People start to talk. Well, he ain't coming back. I can go ahead and tell him what happened. Well, you know it was Aaron. Aaron, you know. I, I watch things get written in a book <laughs> by Phil Jackson about Kobe Bryant, and I saw them kiss and make up and go win championships well, together. And even even uh, Bron went back with old Dan Gilbert. Mm -hmm. It happens. It happens. Okay, but I don't want it to happen because Why? I don't respect. Do Aaron you want Rogers. a championship? Do you want a Super Bowl or not? Dak is going to be better in the next two years than Aaron Rodgers will be. I would take him. Well, over. he hasn't been better than Aaron Rodgers now, in the I, last four years. I told you what I would have done if I'd been Jerry Jones and I could see it coming that Dak and I were not going to make a long-term deal, I would have signed Tom Brady in a heartbeat. Happy birthday, Tom. And I would have had him for the next three years to win a Super Bowl. And I think they, they'd have Tom three shots. Tom is not going to win the Super Bowl in Tampa. Yes, he is. The Fox Bay got him at 8-8. Eight and 8-8. Eight. So, eight and 8-8. Eight. Eight and eight. Want to bet me on that? I, got, I told you 9-7. Okay. I, I, I don't know how much we bet, but I'll, I'll take... Nine and seven right now. I'll take above eight and eight for 15 no, cases yeah, of diet. Juice. I gave him nine and seven. Okay. I got him 12 and four going no, to the yeah, Super we, Bowl. We already got a bet on that. You are, we already bet. They're not going no 12 and four skip. Mm -hmm. Hold up. In a, sh in a short, in a, uh, when basically all you've been learning basically for the last four months is through uh, a Zoom, you've been doing all these virtual stuff. And how are you going to break it up? Because you got you can only have 80 guys. You can only have this guy here, and you can have this many players there. And you think they're going to go 12 and 4 mm. in a new system with new play? It ain't happening. No. Tom Brady with C.D. Lamb. Thank you, God. Tom Woo! Brady's in Tampa. Yep. Take this 8, 9, and 7 mm. and yeah. call it a day. Yep. I'm going to be calling your day every day, okay. every Monday. Oh, would you have that energy? <laughs> you see that energy you got yep. right now? Would you mm -hmm. have that? Yeah. Would you come here? I don't want to hear nothing about no, well, you know, uh, he just got to get used to his receivers and, and the defense let him down. Because you you're going to blame uh, blame B.A. Just like you blame Coach Belichick that every time that something went wrong with Tom Brady, it was Coach Belichick's fault. The coach of the Buccaneers is now one Thomas Edward Patrick Brady Jr. Thank you. Oh, so just like, you just go dismiss B.A., huh? Yeah. Bruce Aries, yeah. okay. It is Tom's birthday, so, you know, you got to give him a little love. No mercy. After posting a photo to Instagram showing the 99-degree heat in Tampa this weekend, social media lost its collective mind once they realized Tom Brady still used an iPhone 6. Brady could certainly afford a new phone after signing a two-year, $50 million deal with Tampa in March, but maybe he just likes his six-year-old phone. I don't know. <laughs> likes to stick with what works. Shannon, should Brady be embarrassed? I know you always have all the new latest yeah, phones. I upgrade mine every year. I keep my phone. But, Jenny, go back. It's the 6+. plus. Six plus came out when? 2014. What year did the flag gate happen, Skip Bayless? Mm. <laughs> you can't fool those things, y'all. <laughs> Old Perry Mason over here, all that info. Remember, he wouldn't turn that phone over. As a matter of fact, he broke it. Wop, wop, just beat the, just beat the phone. Really? Yeah. And then he just kept the Yeah, yeah, you know what? For six years, he you kept know the same what? phone. No, no, he went got him another one. Mm. But he, you know what? He ain't wanted to see that. Mm. You know what's on that? 
all the communication with them ball boys. Really? Yeah, with the amount of air. Okay, mm -hmm. take this one for me. Say this, say that. Yo, Tom Brady came. I got. I mean, I got all my phones too. Every you last, do? Yeah, StarTech, uh -huh. Motorola, all of them. You're afraid somebody's going to they, get a hold of them? They, they, nobody gonna get a hold of nothing. Really? So I thought maybe you'd you'd actually defend Tom because you you got I, all your old phones, I do, right? I do. Okay, so what's wrong with that? So this is the only flaw that you can criticize Tom Brady for. He's got a six-year-old phone. I didn't criticize him, but I'm saying I know why he has still has that phone. Huh. It's G16 classified. Hmm. It's stuff on there. See, Skip, they say, well, we're gonna erase the information. No, you're not. Mm. You ain't gonna erase nothing. Mm. Give me a new phone. Mm. The brains behind Deflate Gate were the head coaches. No, don't do that. Yep. No, see, now you go again. That's... Coach Belichick ain't even got a phone. Uh, yeah, he still, he still used Pony Express yep. and Telegram. Yeah. Way to go, Tom. They don't want to go. Happy birthday, Tom. <laughs> don't want to go, Tom. Happy birthday, Tom. Happy birthday, Ernestine. All right, that's it for us. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, happy on birthday, a Monday, Ernestine. we're back Thank same you. time tomorrow. Have a good day, guys.